Hey, this is Lou Mangiello from WDW Radio, and you're listening to the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. Let's do this. The tangents and squee continue all the way to episode 183 of the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast, and it is here. Thanos is coming. But before he brings a rain of awful feels and destructions on our intrepid Avengers, let's take a moment to look back on the last 10 years. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five Ish Fangirls Podcast. So glad you join us. Let's wait. We're going to the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany in Bethlehem. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hi. everybody. It's here. Marvel Week. It's here. Marvel Week. <laughs> I've been terrified be, be, between Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on Friday Yeah. <laughs> and this movie. Mm. We might all be dead. This may be our last episode. Yeah. I'm sorry, folks. If we don't come back... <laughs> Because we're all dead. Unless we can figure out a way to get the Torchwood Risen Mitten to work without any after effects. <laughs> Something. I will probably I'll probably be the only the only one around since I know I'm not gonna get to see this over the weekend. I'll come back next Monday and be like, So how was the movie guys? And you'll be all like Bleh, 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 bleh. Yeah, really? yes. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> So you may hear Chrissy, uh, maybe Alex, and just bleh, well, the rest well, of us. well, we'll find Alex and I will find something to talk about. Yeah, Alex will just try to grab the microphone. Yeah, it's like he usually. Maybe does. that's when you that's when you can go down the 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 Humphrey the Bear rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking before we before we started recording about the old Humphrey the Bear Disney cartoons, and Holly and I and and Brittany have all seen them. Rachel has not, so we're all like. <gasps> Ow. So, yes. so we're like, we, we, we got to save that time. I lived a sheltered day. childhood. Anyway, <laughs> we, no, it just means you have more to discover. Exactly. Yes. That's that's the way to look at it. So anyway, we have got a lot to talk up because uh, we did not do news last week because we had our special guests on. Mm-hmm. But uh, we will. Uh, we're, we'll jump into the news now, and unfortunately, we have to start with um, too much ten o'clock news. Unfortunately, uh, uh, yeah. well grown. So let's just uh, we'll just, just uh, get get through these. I think hopefully this is less painful as possible. So, first one, um, you may not know his name, um, but uh, Henry Landworth. Uh, passed away recently at the age of 91 um, and you may not know him but um, if you uh, are familiar with um, the indie Disney meet the uh, venue or kind of venue the organization the better better word the organization that they raise money for is give kids a world which uh, we talked a little bit about when we had Aaron on last year before last year's indie Disney meet um, but, uh, Mr. Landworth, um, was the one who founded Give Kids a World, which is the, um, park, resort, whatever mecca in, uh, Florida that, uh, free vacations to children and their families who have life-threatening illnesses. So it's like make a wish, but on steroids, kind of, um, <laughs> Same idea. So if you've ever been on their website, you can go to the Give Kids a World website and they've got pictures and stuff of of their uh, facilities and it's it's a it's a kids dream come true. You know, it's all colorful and all sorts of things to do and oversized, you know, Disney World so those kids that they, you know, they want to go to Walt Disney World, they can. Um so but yeah, he he passed away. Um um after uh, uh, an illness, um, but the whole um, he and part of the reason why he founded Give Kids a World is because he and his he and himself 
is a a Nazi he driver. Um, so he, when he was younger, during the Second World War, um, he saw and experienced, I'm sure, some terrible things. Um, and kind of his philosophy was, you know, I wasn't able to have, I wasn't able to control my childhood and did not have a the, the best childhood. So I want to make sure that children who are facing essentially, you know, horrible, uh, they can have a pleasant childhood. Um, so, um, the, both give kids a world and, uh, the indie Disney beat have been posting things and in honor of him. And, um, I have, I have no idea if maybe they'll, they'll play in anything beyond just the regular fundraising at the indie Disney meet this year or not. I have to ask Aaron. I plan on having Aaron on before the, the event at some point. So, uh, we can always ask cause they haven't announced anything at this. So. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know about that um, that aspect of of the founder, and I'm just kind of thinking, you know, that's the ultimate, you know, taking something awful and mm -hmm. making it into something good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. So that's 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 respectable. I mean, no, nothing but respect. Yeah. Okay. yeah absolutely. So, and, um, uh, Austin Powers uh, star, among other things, but that's what he's best known for. Uh, Vern Troyer uh, passed passed away. Um, and he was fairly young too. What was he forty nine or something? For, like that? Forty nine, yeah. yeah. And he yeah. was also, I want to say, I'm pretty sure he was one of. He was in Harry Potter. He played. I thought he played Grip Hook, the, the yes, goblin. I believe so. He played. He played a goblin of some sort. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was like all these things, all these things saying, "Oh, he's from Austin Powers." Like, well, yes, he was also in Harry Potter. He, but, he's, um, he's been a lot of things. I mean, when you have there's been a lot of yeah. I mean, when you have you know, if you're someone of a that that stature, you know, it so opens up a lot of you're able to take roles that no one else can't because they just don't work. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I know. I saw that, and I'm like, I was just really sad. Because yeah. he's mini me, and he was he was grip hook, and he's a, I, he was in a lot of other different things, and hmm. yeah. Sorry, yeah. Alex. Was... <laughs> Comments from the peanut gallery. Yeah, it's like we're trying to be serious here. This is serious stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know uh, what that means. Well, <laughs> um, and then um, the. Uh, <laughs> Star of uh, Night Court. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. TV shows I watched as a kid on randomness. Yes. Flipping through the TV. Mm -hmm. uh, Harry Anderson uh, yep. passed away, which um, I think majority of people know him from, from Night Court. Um, but yep. what a lot mm -hmm. of people may not realize is, is he, was a, he was a very <laughs> talented magician, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he passed away at the age of 65. Um, and then um, uh, uh, actor, um, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I, I <laughs> The way I typed it out, when I first typed it out, it was like, oh, that's not right. Uh, so, um, Arlie Ermy? Ermy, uh, yeah, Ermy? Arlie yeah. Ermy. Ar People might not have seen his movies. Uh, if you've ever seen the Geico commercials where, you know, does a, does a, uh, a drill sergeant make a terrible therapist. He's yep. the drill sergeant. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, and yeah. but he's also, uh, you know, Full Metal Jacket, and he always played, you know, the, the military the gunny sergeant type, type roles. <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. if you if you watch ever the Toy Story movies, the Green Army, he was the yeah, he was that was the, the, the general him. or whatever the you know the high the high ranking Green Army man in the Toy Story movies. Yeah. So. And I think he used to host some of the military military shows that were like half, you know, hour in full. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. He's he's had several like TV shows. I there was a, I think it was on Netflix for a short while. I think the Chauncey and I watched, and he went he went around and talked to to people about different types of like uh, military like vehicles and stuff, mm -hmm. like tanks and cannons and fighter jets and, and that sort of thing so it was like 
Um, and then uh, if you if you don't know why your flags have been at half staff uh, around the country, um, uh, passed away um, at the age of uh, ninety two. Yeah, I and mean, I'd seen that that she was um, that she was ill and was was in hospice care, but I didn't. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't expect her to her to pass away so quickly. Yeah. And, and now, was, oh no, go ahead. I was gonna say, and now her husband, former person, in and out of ho I the mean, hospital for the last few years, but. Yeah, I kind of, I thought he would go first, honestly, but I don't know, mm -hmm. I saw a clip of, of, um, of him, like, greeting people at her, at her viewing, mm -hmm. and it was just like, he was just standing, or, well, he was in a wheelchair, so he was sitting next to her casket and, like, wouldn't leave. Yeah, he, he had some, hands I, with had everybody. like, a nurse or a, a, an aide. Sad. Yeah. And, well, they were, but, I mean. They, they were married for, like, six 70 or 75 years or something like that. Seven, yeah, 75 sounds about right. Yeah. I think. So, I mean, that's just, you know, to be, to be with someone that long, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then suddenly they're no longer there. That's That's got to be tough no matter what age. Uh -oh. So. Parents, when my grandma passed away and my grandpa was just like, I'm done. <laughs> of course, yeah. they were in their, they were in their 80s, so. And anyway, but yes, it was, and just all the tributes to her coming out, just all of these people mm -hmm. just seeing what a, what a class act she was and, mm -hmm. you know, they're right. Well, and, and, you know, she, you know, her, her husband and she would have been first lady when, um, that sort of thing. And, you know, anybody that, you know, went to school and learned about say no to drugs, you know, mm -hmm. that was her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was her because every first lady has some cause that they take up, yeah. and that was that was hers, and that was kind of yeah, you know was, they they had all the videos and she was on them yeah, and, and the PSA and that kind and of thing. thing. So but yeah, so if you if you if you were a kid, and... yeah. Anyway, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. It's like it feels like a piece of my childhood. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. So yeah. And this was interesting. It's like, and, and, you know, we don't want to get political here, but, you know, people, no matter what political party, if any, you affiliate with, there were people just saying all kinds of nice tributes to her. So it's just kind of, that was, that's always good to see. Yeah. 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 So that's our 10 o'clock news. So. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to other news. First off, some convention news. So, Indie PopCon, which is in slightly overall bond. Um, still uh, still do, doing it, uh, hyping people up with the guest announcements. First, a cancellation. Uh, Jason David Frank, unfortunately, has to cancel due to work obligations. He's Filming something. Uh, I, I wonder. I don't know if, him, all, if any of you saw that video of him. Was it Lord Drakken or something? Well, that was it's just like, a promotional it's, thing he did for the comic series that came out. Yeah, so. sort of the comics. I'm yeah. like, I wonder if they'll do more of those videos because I saw that, that and I'm like, cool. dude, that is really cool. Then I found out what the premise of it was. I was like, that's even cooler. Yeah, may have to read get those comics. Yeah. So Jason David Frank had to cancel. So. A little sad. Um, yeah. But they got another OG Power Ranger and to, <laughs> to uh, replace him, depending on how you feel about him, I guess. It's a good replacer or a bad replacer. As much as I love Jason David Frank, I know I've said Power Ranger's my childhood. He was one of my first childhood crushes. You know, when, <laughs> once I got to the age where, you know, you could start having crushes on on tv characters and stuff however personally his replacement i'm more excited about <laughs> because as much as i love tommy oliver dang it if i did not love billy cranston <laughs> is coming to indie popcorn and i think i might die <laughs> i actually 
Um, David Yost actually came to the first Salt Lake Comic Con, and he was the first celebrity I met at mm. Comic Con just because his line was really short when I got there. Yeah. So I was like, "Hey, hi!" And he was he was awesome. Yeah. He was really he was a he, sweetheart. He was in the row so. of Power Rangers when I went to Lexington a couple of years ago, where it was just like Power Rangers all down almost an entire wall of <laughs> in the celebrity area, and I just kind of went down to the ones I knew. You know, I was like, hey, how you doing? Because, you know, I'd already spent all my money, so I couldn't afford, you know, autographs or anything. But it's like, you know, they it's nice just to go up and say hi, and I love your work and that sort of thing. So I just went down the row, and David had it happened to be one of them. I was like, he, he, in my head, I'm like, Billy, it's a Blue Ranger. Oh, my God. So once again, I'm be like, I... this time I will have money. So I'm going to be like, oh, my God. And I can actually get his autograph. So. You can actually you can actually get something for him to sign. I so can. yay! So. I can I can I and the the poster that I have that I had gotten uh, uh, Johnny on Bosch's uh, last year. I can have David sign because he too is a on doing at least with the at least with the the the, the six. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, so yeah, I'm excited, David Yost. <laughs> so, so this next one, if you're that excited for David Yost, one, how, how excited are you on for this, this next one? This, this next one is so exciting that Brittany is like 50-50 trying to figure out if she can come and stay and crash on my couch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do it. So Do it. One, so... Because it wasn't exciting enough that Palm, aka Mantis, is coming to Indie Pop Con to help rep the Marvel Cinematic Universe and give some, give some more uh, hype to the awesome women that are in the MCU. But we are getting another awesome woman, also from the MCU, in the form of Gemma Simmons. <laughs> Elizabeth Henstridge is coming to Indie Pop Gun. <laughs> now I wonder if there's going to be an announcement about her better half making an appearance. <laughs> oh, uh, man. As far as I, I know, I, no. <laughs> oh, I would, I, I would be hard-pressed to not, you know, yeah. get on a plane and go to Indie. Yeah, if that was announced, I'd be like, sorry, walk, but yeah. <laughs> Indiana was calling me. I've got a couch. <laughs> uh, my mom's got a, a room with a spare bed that two of you, if you don't mind getting a little cozy, could both sleep on. <laughs> <laughs> or we could put a, 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 a air bed in the sewing room upstairs. <laughs> so we can find places for you. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'll bring a sleeping bag. <laughs> yeah. It, honestly, it, I mean, at, the, at this point, point I, I you know uh uh I, I, you know I, i'm sure popcon probably still has a few more tricks up their sleeves but uh uh their budget has to be bulging at this point <laughs> well you know maybe maybe that's a sign of you know how much how much they have in in the kitty as yeah. it were <laughs> like hey let's go for broke yeah because <laughs> we can yeah, yeah. go big or go home yeah so. Exactly. So, but yes, I'm I'm excited to to meet Elizabeth Simmons. She's adorable. So, so that's uh, that's where Indie PopCon is at the moment. Um, and speaking of the Indie Disney Meet, um, they have uh, started making announcements for people and or things that you can come and see and hear and. Possibly eat, definitely eat, um, which is really appropriate considering this guest announcement. Uh, so, but uh, the, I guess the the I don't know if you'd want to call him the their their main guest or you know, because he's too much of a nice guy to to be like you know super duper. I mean, he is super duper awesome guest, but everyone's favorite. Uh, Disney loving, uh, Spider Man loving fan, and uh, big old uh, Disney nerd and fellow foodie, 
<laughs> Lou Mangiello is coming to this year's Indie Divisions, and I am so excited. So now, now, did you have a hand in this at all? I did not. Did, I had a... no idea. <laughs> Someone's I, very good at keeping secrets. Yeah, <laughs> I been. honestly, I had no idea. I made sure to message Aaron, though. <laughs> <laughs> that is so Right cool. after like the Lou. announcement, I, like, texted Chauncey, and then I messaged Aaron. I'm like, Lou is coming! <laughs> and uh, Chauncey's like, sweet! So now I'm on... Uh, if any, if anyone came to um, Starbase Indie last year and got to, and no, uh, got to experience uh, Disney or uh, Chauncey's uh, uh, VR experience, um, that may be possibly, probably making an appearance at the Indie Disney Meet. So sweet. Speaking of Lou, he's a troll. <laughs> yeah, he's like, saying, he has right. that post of like his mystery guest for his this week's his. Oh, that's next Kevin episode. Feige. Like, Speaking oh, of Lou, and this is very appropriate for uh, our topic this week. If if anyone's not following Lou, you kind of need to be because right now his happy butt is all the way over in Los Angeles doing all mm-hmm. this media crap. For Avengers Infinity War, and I'm so jealous so of him right I'm now. <laughs> I know, like he, he kept teasing that yesterday, like like what's behind this curtain? It's got the Avengers logo, and I'm just like, you didn't, and he did. He did. <laughs> yeah. And his latest is mystery guest interview for this week's show. Yeah, yeah. It's like the poster of Infinity War behind. I'm like, who is it? Yeah, well, can, it. I mean, Lou's on the short side. Sorry, Lou, but he totally owns the fact that he's short. But considering, like, the person's shoulder is so much higher than his head, and the fact oh, that... Oh, I didn't notice that. What, and the, what, the, it now. what little this. bit that you can see that they're wearing, I would almost put money that that's Kevin Feige. Ooh. So, the, the big cheese himself. The big cheese. I mean, as far as Lou's show is concerned, it makes the most sense as far as the interview goes. <laughs> It's either that or one of the Russos, but I'm almost entirely sure that it's Kevin Feige. So, I mean, I could be wrong, but... Well, you know, we're not going to not speculate about this. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So, but yeah, Lou... We Lou, anxiously await. Yeah, and when's he going to announce the it? Fact it's that, said later I, today. That was seven hours ago. Yeah. It's later today. Tell us. Well, the red carpet. Well, he is. He is a- the red carpet's getting ready to start in like fifteen minutes, and he's That's probably there. True. So, <laughs> yeah. I hate his guts so much at the moment. I, I kid. I say that in the most lovingly way possible. You know, I. <laughs> jumping slightly ahead here to the tonight's topic, but this week's topic. But as long as I've been following the MCU and watching like the live stream of the red carpets and that and that sort of thing with the movie releases, even the occasional like you, Andre, who gets to go to these things, I'm like, oh, that's cool. But the fact that somebody I actually know, exactly, <laughs> is there. And shared an elevator with Tom Hiddleston at one point. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna have to get so many stories out of him when I see him in August. I'm gonna be like, "Tell me everything." Still, <laughs> it's, it's like it's like I need to shake the hand that shook the hand of Kevin the else that you saw. Pretty much. I'm not saying it. Pretty I mean, much. that's like, a guess, you, but you whoever were, it is, you were in the same room breathing air with Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. And you're just sitting there going fangirl drool all over while he's telling you all much. about this. Pretty much. I mean, I'm sure he's having the time of his life, and it's I'm sure it's a once in a lifetime thing. And I'm sure he's pinching himself every single solitary moment the entire time he's there. But uh, and he absolutely deserves it. You know, he's been you know podcasting and doing his thing for for so long. And uh, he's a huge Marvel fan, especially if Spider Man comic book nerd. And, you know, if anyone if anyone deserves uh, the opportunity to to go to something like this, it is is definitely him. But Lou slash Kevin Feige, if anyone wants to invite us 
for the red carpet next year <laughs> for the second half, I will clear my calendar now. Mm -hmm. Me too. We volunteer as yep. tributes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Get the five ish to Avengers Four. Hashtag. Start trending. Tag everyone in the Avengers and the MCU that you know. <laughs> Warning. I'm gonna say what I'm saying because it'd be so high pitch and squee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll have really play golfers. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if, you know, if we start the campaign now, by the time Avengers 4 rolls around next year, we might get somewhere. So <laughs> I will start the hashtag rolling after we're done and then people can go for there. <laughs> Let's tag the Russos and just go from there. So. More on that do. subject after we finish the news. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we saw the well, we slap happy just because as much as the 10 o'clock news was awful... Some of the news is just we amazing. Need, we need stuff. some good stuff, right? And I've got some good I, stuff right here. So, yeah. um, Well, I forgot to put this in the news because I really wasn't sure how to link it. Because the uh, Salt Lake Comic Con fan acts. Yes. But Salt Lake Comic Con did their um, press conference last week yeah. and announced a bunch of guests. And the big one, and there were some that I wasn't quite sure who they were. Although, I guess Tom Welling is um, from Smallville. Mm -hmm. He's going to be there. Chuck Norris Ooh. is is coming to Fanex in September. And I don't know how they got him, but they Walker got him. Texas Ranger himself. <laughs> yes, that, that guy and that, all those memes that everybody says. That, that just means the weekend off. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yes. Evil doers, go somewhere else. The entire, like, Norris from from, from the, what's, what's the name of the, what's the name of the convention center? Uh, the Salt, Salt Palace the Salt, Convention Center. The Salt Palace and probably, oh, a hundred mile radius around it. Crime free yeah. the entire weekend. Yeah, all of, all of downtown Salt Lake going to be completely safe. Yep. <laughs> no one's going to, no carjackings. No one's going to try to steal anything. You're, you're probably not, no one's oh. going to even try and jaywalk. <laughs> 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 Trying to cross the street to get to the convention center. <laughs> so. Yep. No speeding tickets, nothing. The police department's just going to be like, man, it's like a vacation. <laughs> They're like, hey, we'll take a vacation. We'll go to the con. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Oh. No, to the word, just joking. I'm certain the police will be doing yes. their jobs mm -hmm. when, during sure. the convention. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And... I can't, I can't remember all the other guests. There were some I just didn't really know, but other people were excited for him, so I'm happy for them. But I was like, hey, I know who Chuck Norris is. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't see that one. I saw the Tom Welling one. I was like, oh, he's, he's, yeah. he's Superman-ish. So. Yeah. He's Clark Kent. Um, oh, well, and, uh, and Vic Mignon is going to be there, but he's been there before, and yes. he had to cancel last time, so I, I figured they was going to come back. Yeah. So I was like, that one... Not much of a surprise, although I'm glad they got him because he's a good guest. Yeah. One of the most enthusiastic bumpers that we have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. In the history oh, of this podcast. I, every, time, every time I hear that bumper, I just I just grin because he was so great when, when I got that from him. Yeah. Especially because I, I, the first time I tried to get it, I didn't turn my recorder on properly, so it didn't record. So that's actually his second try. <laughs> And he was so he was so gracious when I said, um, it didn't record. Can you do it again, please? And he's like, oh, sure. <laughs> it's like, did I do something wrong? I was like, no, no, it was you. It was or it was me. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but yeah. That's convention news. So that still works. Yes. Yep. Yay, convention news. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to non-convention news and. Uh, Alex babbling in the background this is kind of appropriate. Speaking of babies, oh yeah, <laughs> he wants to say hello to his um to the new to the newest member of uh, Planet Earth, I guess. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I I picked a good day to stay <laughs> because I got up this morning and all over the 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 social medias. Duchess of Cambridge has been admitted in the early stages of labor and like. <gasps> So, of course, you know, immediately I'm on Sky News on YouTube, 
live feed from the Lindo wing. And apparently baby number three, by, or apparently by baby number three, her, her body knew what to, what to do because she was in, birthed, dressed, hair, makeup, heels, dressed, and out the door and back, to the, back home in 12 hours. <laughs> I know, I saw, because I saw the post on our page that you posted, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, we'll just keep an eye on this all day, and then, yes. like, an hour later, I saw a thing, oh, she's got, she's out, they had a boy. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm glad for her that she didn't only had to be there for 12 hours, I was right. in the hospital almost a week. Yeah. <laughs> Not in labor, but there were other things. But. Yeah, well, your baby was a little bigger than hers. <laughs> uh, yes. And you don't you, uh, you don't have nearly the staff tending to your every whim no, as the future no, queen is, of England does. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yes, Royal Baby Watch for now um, has come to an end. They uh, William and Kate have had a baby boy that they all thought she was having a girl. I even had a dream Saturday <laughs> night that she'd had the baby and it was a girl, and they named her Alice. Shows you how wrong I was. <laughs> maybe there's maybe there's a fourth one and you skipped ahead. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Maybe we'll have another one. Uh, who knows? So, but yes, uh, uh, bouncing baby boy, eight pounds seven ounces uh, today on Saint to on, on Saint George's Day of all days. Yet yeah, they can't name him George because they already have a George. I know. I was gonna say, too bad they already named the other one. But yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Maybe it can be a middle name. I mean, they give the yeah. royal babies like ten middle names. That is true. So, well, I'm pretty sure one of William's names is George. I think it's like William, William Louis Arthur George or something like that. So, it is a possibility. But, uh, but yeah, the bouncing baby boy. So family, uh, the safely back at Kensington Palace, uh, settling into the life as a, a family of five with three children under the age of five. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lovely. Yep. Which, when you're royalty, not that big a deal, because you've got all sorts of help. So. Alex, like, and Alex is already extending an invitation for a play date. So. Yes. He, he's like, like let's 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 do lunch, kid. Yep. <laughs> it's like I don't think it works that way, but good try. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. Oh, royal baby watch done. Royal wedding anticipation can now go full throttle. Yes. Yeah. Although I guess we're still waiting on what they're going to name the little guy. Well, yes. Yep. Yeah, we don't have a name yet, but soon. And then, but yeah, at this point, it's like okay, now we can. Get all excited for the big royal to do that's coming up in like slightly over three weeks, and by then Kate will probably look like you had, you had no idea that she had a baby less than a month ago. <sighs> More than likely. <laughs> no. Congratulations to all little prince. Chauncey was like, "Why are you so excited? You don't Yay. like?" He's like, "You don't like babies." I'm like, "But it's a royalty." <laughs> Like anybody, everyone, everyone loves a, a a new baby prince. Yeah, it's like anybody can have a baby, but not everybody can have a prince or princess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, every parent thinks their child is royalty, but these kids actually are. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right, moving on to some trailers. We got a final trailer for Deadpool 2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which at this oh point, with this, this point with everything with Deadpool, I'm just like, yeah, okay. I'll see you in the movie theater. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm actually sorry. So, and tickets are all now on sale, too. So, um, if you want to... Uh, Grab those. The tickets are on sale for uh, Deadpool 2. I will be the one sitting in the theater trying not to choke while eating my chimichanga. So, because I'm <laughs> laughing so hard. Maybe finish your dinner before. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. good idea. You really, you do, you really don't want to be. Chimichanga warning before entering the movie theater. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, if it's anything, if it's anything remotely like the last Deadpool, yeah, you probably don't want to be eating or drinking anything while watching it because you will probably choke and or snort mm-hmm. up your nose. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and then we got a trailer for Incredibles two, oh, which gives us a, a bit so more bad. idea that looks of so the plot. Awesome. Yep. Does it baby Jack Jack get a few more additional powers? Yeah. I think he did. Yeah. And I'm just looking at it, and I look at my little boy, and I'm just like, I'm glad you're not a superhero. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Like, I have enough, you know, you're going to be walking soon enough, and I have enough trouble keeping up with you anyway. (laughs) Yeah. But no, it looks like it's going to be a fun movie. Yeah. Very and then we got a trailer for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which, I mean, I'm excited, but I mm-hmm. I, I kind of wish they'd not release this trailer because it gives an, away an awful lot of the plot that I kind of wish I'd been surprised on. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, good thing. I, okay, I haven't watched the show, so maybe I'm going to skip this one. Yeah, I would, so that the plot's more of a <laughs> yeah. of, of trailers. It wasn't that bad, but this last one, I'm like, that's a Nothing plot like twist the whole that I did away. not see coming. So like, knowing my luck, it's gonna they're going to show that one before Infinity War or probably. any other movie I see before. <laughs> probably. That's when you, clo- <laughs> when you close your eyes and plug your ears and go, la, la, la. Sorry, Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when 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 you st- when you start to hear the because they'll they'll play the Jurassic Park theme, I'm sure when you'll start to hear that you're like, okay, my my popcorn is is very interesting right about now, yeah. and and I'm gonna go to the bathroom, and mm-hmm. you know, yep. a little bit. <laughs> no. Um, and yeah, because when I saw it, I was like, oh man, I, now I wish I could unsee it, but I can't. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was, I was glad to see more of Jeff Goldblum. But mm-hmm. I, was yeah. like, I was like, that's a plot twist that I kind of did not. This is not how I thought things were going to go. Now I'm like really curious, but the, also I'm like, no, it come, it's, it's coming out soon. Yeah, don't I do guess. it. Don't do it. Brittany, don't click. Yeah. I know, like the link is right click. there too. I'm staring at the link. Don't do it. <laughs> Move the mouse away from the link. We don't need it playing uh. in the background anyway. <laughs> Copyright. I should stop you. No. Uh, okay, so news are Netflix related, Netflix series related, and uh, some casting news for Stranger Things season three. So if Sean Astin in season two was not enough of a throwback uh, yeah. to the the era that Stranger Things is set in. This casting, uh, and, and if you caught the uh, Sean Astin role through in there, references to things like Goonies and Lord of the Rings and some other things. Although there was not a Rudy reference, which you'd think set in Indiana. They would have made some sort of Rudy reference, like Notre Dame mm-hmm. or something. But anyway, it's probably in there. probably got cut or something. So, but, yeah, maybe there's some deleted scene somewhere. Probably. So the, the references opportunities oh, for the boy. for the picking because they have cast Carrie Elwes as the mayor of Hawkins <laughs> Oh you know, him okay. being the mayor though his is 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 you know campaign slogan could be as you wish. Yes. I was yeah. thinking the same <laughs> I was just about to say that. So I'm like guys if you don't do that it, that massive missed opportunity. Oh my goodness! Mm. There's so many opportunities. And, and if he acts need a certain crew of storm chasers that just happened to land in the territory, you know why? <laughs> 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 Sorry, uh, two weeks ago, flicks with friends. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> no, but uh, he he will be playing uh, Larry Klein, the mayor of Hawkins, who in the casting call. Um, was described as uh, it was it was uh, a lot of the morally bankrupt mayor from Jaws, a classic '80s style slick politician, pathetic and driven only by his own interests. The studio is looking for a male aged forty to sixties to fill the role. <laughs> so, so th- this 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 isn't 
this isn't Dread Pirate Roberts or Dread Pirate mm, Wesley. This no. is this is a, a he's a scumbag. Yep. This news <laughs> cast Carrie Elwes in the next season of Stranger Things as the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it, it, Jared is a little disappointed. Doesn't want him to be a bad guy. <laughs> well, he, he, he could play bad guy quite well. Just uh, pop in the season four, season five episode of Leverage. Yeah. The Big Bird Jab. He plays. I have to see that episode uh, or before they took it off Hulu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's exciting. And I just, well, we are all going to be counting and listening and looking for the, uh, Princess Pride reference. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Oh, they'll be there. There's, sure. there's definitely going to be an "As You Wish" in there somewhere. So, yes. at the very least, yeah, or, or and or the that word is not what you think it means. <laughs> yeah, he's confusing that word. Is not what you think it means? So, um, and then our last bit of news is Jessica Jones has been renewed for season three. Yay! So. Everyone's uh, favorite drunk PI shall be returning. So that's exciting. <clears throat> and I'm assuming right now, since um, and I guess until Disney comes along and says, hey, we are streaming services ready, that they continue to stay on Netflix. So. Mm-hmm. so there is that. That is news. So next up, feedback. Um, and we got a comment from Shalane uh, commenting on our currently uh, uh, episode, which hopefully will not start playing here as I try to get to her comment. Uh, so um, she says the, the books re- she's been reading uh, Harry Potter, Percy Jackson, some Jane Austen, um, Heroes of Olympus, and the Narnia novels. Um, the Trails, or Trials of Apollo, which I'm not familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a Rick Riordan it, series. Very okay. good. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, Percy Jackson universe thing. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Little Women. They all kind of tied together. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, Little Women and uh, Jared's books. <laughs> yes. Uh, shame, shameless plug, Jared's uh Third book, second book in the Long Black Chron- or the Black Chronicles, Black Holidays yeah. is out yeah. and just finished it and looking forward to book three. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's gonna be yay. And just quick aside, if anyone has read the books, a review on Amazon would be very much appreciated. Yeah. Done well. and done. <laughs> yay! Thank you, <laughs> and thanks to anyone who does read and review. <laughs> Um, and then she says the shows and movies she's been watching, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Trolls, Golden Girls, Saved by the Bell, and a series of unfortunate events. Um, and a uh, musical episode that we should do an episode of our favorite animated movies that are non-musicals. Hmm. Ooh. That would be an interesting one to do. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure it'd still be a lot of Disney, but... <laughs> oh, Yes. Of course, but that's, uh, yeah. Yep. So, thank you, Shalane, for that. And then we got some audio feedback from uh, Sean, or from our brother podcast, Traveling the Vortex, and he had a lot to say. He tried to keep us yes. succinct, <laughs> but he had uh, quite a bit to say about our quantum leap episode that we did last week so we will give a a listen uh, to sean's feedback hello ladies this is sean from uh, over traveling the vortex wanted to say that i listened to your newest episode about quantum leap and curse you all and i say that because well i love quantum leap and it's fantastic and it's you know one of my top shows and one of my earliest fondest memories of television fandom outside of star trek and um i've watched the series i was one of those guys that you know we taped it every week we you know hunted around the schedule for it i didn't come to it right away actually i think it probably wasn't until the second season that i discovered it and then nbc did leap week 
where they would air an episode every night. And that really kind of helped. Oh, this is a great show. So we started, you know, trying to figure out where it was at on the schedule, despite the fact they moved it around incessantly. I was there for the cursed episode, The Boogeyman, which apparently when it aired, uh, as it did in in my hometown, uh, there were terrible storms. And uh, it kept blanking out, and people were losing their cable. That happened across the country. And apparently, subsequently, every time it re-aired, something weird would happen. I finally got a chance to see that one in its entirety years later when USA picked them up. So, yeah, it's been a, it's been pretty, pretty hardcore uh, part of my fandom. And I curse you because, well, you introduced me to the Quantum Leap Podcast. And, yeah, I've got plenty of time to devote to something else. So I'm looking forward to mainlining that now. (laughs) And it's all your fault. I enjoyed your talk very much, and I'm looking forward to delving into them. Uh, Just a couple of notes that I wanted to pass on. They asked, you know, favorite episode. And I really had to stop and think about it. And this may sound weird, because, I mean, I love all the big ones, MIA and The Leap Home and The Leap Back. Uh, Just a lot of those that are, are great fun. But I think... My favorite is Another Mother. It's kind of a strange choice, I think, but I've always enjoyed that one for the message that it puts forth, the interactions between Sam and the kids. I don't know. Maybe it's... I saw a lot of myself in in The Young Man, and I I think that that's maybe why. It just just resonated for some reason. Um, So that's kind of always been a... A favorite. I, I sent you the picture, which you're welcome to share on your website, uh, with my book collection because yes, I've, I, I own all of the books except for one. Uh, Song and Dance has been one that has just eluded me for years. I've never been able to find it. In fact, I didn't even know it had been released. I had gone and picked these things up religiously at the bookstore every month. I'd pick up the new Quantum Leap book, or you know, however uh, frequently they were released, along with my Star Trek novels, which I bought a bunch of those. And for whatever reason, Song and Dance was one that I missed. So I can say, after listening to your podcast, I got re-inspired. I did a search, and I found a copy on eBay, and I bought it. So it's on its way. I now can say that I own all of the Quantum Leap novels. (laughs) So curse you twice. And like he said, um, the books are all pretty good. Um, There there, there weren't any of them that I felt were uh, super amazing standout. Maybe one or two. Um, but uh, none of them were dogs. So if you choose to get into the books and start reading them, you can be assured at the very least you're going to get a a, a decent Quantum Leap story. So there's that. It's funny that you bring those up. Here's a little-known fact that uh, not not everybody knows. I, too, struck up a conversation and uh, and got to know the publisher over at uh, the Penguin imprint that was doing the Quantum Leap books, and I submitted... A quantum Leap novel for consideration. I had submitted my, my, my outline in three chapters, and they liked it, and they wanted to see more. And I submitted a novel called Freefall. And at the time that it came in, the series had been canceled. I just assumed, like with the Star Trek books, it was going to continue uh, in book form. And I got a very nice note from the publisher that said, um, because of the show being off the air, Universal had decided not to renew the book license. And therefore, there was only going to be one more book published. And mine was one of 12 manuscripts that was up for consideration for that final spot. Now, unfortunately, they did not go with mine. Um, I think because they knew that it was the last book, they went with something that had a little bit more big, epic feel to it. And uh, I don't blame them for that at all. But uh, I, I, I lament what I missed out on. And so, once again, my brush with greatness. I was almost there. I was almost a, a, a published Quantum Leap author. But one of 12 is not too bad. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind or her mind, based on the uh, the uh, letter that I got, that uh, had the series been renewed for uh, another year's worth of books, that I would have been uh, joined in those ranks. So it's a little bittersweet. Yeah. No, it's very bittersweet. Anyway, uh, so curse you three times for making me relive that. One final thought on Mirror Image. So, obviously, spoilers for anybody who's not seen it. Um, You asked about the ending and what people thought of it. And I kind of side with all of you that I love the episode and I hate the ending. Specifically, that last title card. 
I love the fact that Sam fixed things for Al and Beth. I love that Al has four daughters, that he never remarried. That That's all extremely heartwarming. The fact that Dr. Sam Beckett never returned home. While I agree that it's in his nature and wonderful to think about the fact that he's choosing not to go home so that he can continue to help people. And that is also a very heartwarming, uh, a wonderful moment. It destroys me emotionally every single time I think about it. And I think I'd be more okay with it if we hadn't gotten the leap back. If it was just Sam and he was turning his back on his friends and the project in order to help people, that's a noble endeavor and I'd be more okay with it. But the leap back establishes that he changed history and is married to Donna, that she is there at the project waiting for him. And for a love that was so powerful between the two of them, I can't accept that he doesn't come back to her. That's the, that's the part that really destroys me, is that she is there waiting, and he never returns home. That bothers me. I, I just, it, oh, I'm getting teary-eyed actually thinking about it as I record this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, that that's the part of it that... Uh, so in my own personal headcanon, everything happens as is, and I turn the episode off before I get to that last uh, card because I can't do it. I, I can't, I can't accept that that he doesn't make it home. I just, I just can't do it. As to the reboot or remake or sequel series, um, it's another issue that I'm torn on. There's a part of me that's like, yes, 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 more, 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 um, and there's another part of me that feels, I don't know. It's kind of perfect the way it is. Maybe we should leave it be. One of the more intriguing ideas that I did here was that Belisario was considering a sequel series in which one of Al's daughters stepped into the accelerator to try and bring Sam back and that she was assisted by uh, another one who who then was a female hologram. So the four daughters that Al has at the end of, of Mirror Image are now the ones that are the lead sh- uh, the leads on the show trying to bring back, you know, Uncle Sam, as it were. And I feel like that idea has a really cool twist to it. I, I like the gender-bent idea there uh, of, of having two female leads, especially if you can get somebody that has the chemistry that Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell had. So in that regard, I feel like, yeah, okay, let's let's see what happens here. As Scott Bakula said, you know, we're we're too old. They don't want us except for maybe a cameo. And that's, well, not true at all, but (laughs) logical. (laughs) I'll I'll give him logical. But uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, your discussion and uh, kind of rekindling the the embers of, of, of the Quantum Leap fandom. It's never something that's truly gone away in my life. It's always there. Um, and every con, every every Planet Comic Con planning meeting that uh, that I get invited to when they ask, well, who would you like to see this year? Which is kind of a silly question because they get 10,000 different responses. But every single time I say Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell because that's kind of the, the pinnacle of the people I would like to meet at this point. So, as always, keep up the good work, ladies. I'm glad to hear things are going well. And, uh, Chrissy, I was just teasing about the geek card but you do need to watch this show. Really, seriously. You, it's right up your alley. You would absolutely love it. So you, 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 sh- you should do that. Thanks again, ladies, for uh, bringing back some memories. Have a good one. Thank you, Sean, for your <laughs> as succinct as possible feedback. And uh, um, I, I would say sorry for the three curses, but uh, we're not sorry. Yeah. Nope, not at all. <laughs> we're, we're glad we take them and the... Yeah. <laughs> Like I'm not sorry yeah, that we were given. Yeah, I'm not sorry that we introduced you to a new podcast and gave you something else to listen to or uh, may take up your my uh, your time and or your money. <laughs> you do the same thing to us. I spent from listening to your exactly. podcast. Exactly. Turnabout is fair play. How yes. many how many candy jar books have you guys reviewed? <laughs> 
and big finish audios and Doctor Who comics. So just this it's once. All, it's all it's all money well spent. I mean, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't take it with it. Take it with you. So yeah, might as well enjoy it. Uh huh. But still, so yeah. But thank you for the feedback anyway, Sean. So we yes. appreciate it. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, Albie and Chris and everyone else over at the Quantum Leap Podcast appreciate another uh, subscriber. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and, and we can't say thank you enough to, to Albie and Chris for, for joining. Mm-hmm. So. All righty. With that, let's move on to this week's topic, which is... The hype. The hype <laughs> is so, so much hype. So you guys. real. I've got. The, I've got. It's. I keep saying red carpet, and I mean they're they're calling it a red carpet because I mean that's what Hollywood calls it, but actually the carpet's purple. It's Thanos purple. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case I might see Lou, you know, in the mm-hmm. sea of, of of people. And if if you do, and we're in the middle of recording. And, and, I'll take and a Rachel screenshot. stops talking, you'll, you'll know why. I'll take a screenshot on my phone. <laughs> like, I see him! Hey, I, I, I managed to spot some friends uh, of mine sitting in the bleachers at the Academy Awards one year, so oh, cool. it is good. I could suss out Lou Mangello in this crowd, so. As short as he is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lou. I love you. So, anyway... Marvel. Hey, you know what? Lou, Lou shouldn't feel bad about being short. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is not exactly, you know, That's the tallest true. guy in the room either. That is true. Some of the nicest guys are the shortest ones. But some of the nicest guys are tall ones. So, <clears throat> but without the tattoos. But anyway, so Marvel Cinematic Universe Infinity War. <laughs> ten years. Uh, ten years. Eighteen movies. I, I did the math. Eighteen movies. Three network TV series-ish, even if they only had one season, that still counts. Netflix series. And then that doesn't include all the comics and the, I'm sure, bajillion Easter eggs and multiple Stan Lee cameos. <laughs> and hours and hours and hours of music. I, I, I've been listening... Uh, for the last week or so, I've been listening to all of the soundtrack. I'm on YouTube and listening to them, and I've got a playlist. And I think I've got everything except the Incredible Hulk. That's the only one I've not listened to yet. That's um, like it's like three hundred and something songs, <laughs> just with you. I need a. I'll, I have to put if I can if I can link the playlist. I will. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, I think you can do that on YouTube. I think you can send link a playlist of yeah, this public yeah, yeah. playlist on my phone <laughs> of some of my favorite tracks from various movies of the the MCU. So, which are definitely some people knock the music in the the, the MCU, um, saying that you know it's not that memorable and it, you know well, unlike some other movies, it's... but. Some that are definitely, they, and I think it's more because they're, some of them are just so different. I mean, if you listen to all of them, like all the Iron Mans have kind of a, a, the same feel to them. Um, mm-hmm. Even though they were all done by different composers. Um, all of the Captain Americas, I mean, the Captain Americas you can definitely hear. The Captain, yeah. especially the first Avenger has a very specific feel to it it's very militaristic with a lot of horns and brass and a lot of you know oh that's very you know big band 1940s yeah, uh, uh, feel kind to of thing it too. um thor and thor dark world uh, they're pretty forgettable actually thor ragnarok definitely different um uh-huh. but it's where the mcu and the feel of it is go has gone it, where mm-hmm. it started and where it's come to. Um, um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Obviously, you have the awesome mixes, which they're their own uh-huh. thing, but there actually is soundtracks that's not the popular, well-known music. It's right. the background. Yeah, music. Score. If, yeah. Score. if you guys ever watch uh, the... <laughs> 
always picks up on the music. And even in the Guardians um, movies, he, he talks about the score. And it's, um, uh, I want to say Michael Giacchino. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 G- yeah, he does. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, he did, uh, well, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, both of those were done by Tyler Bates. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Michael Giacchino did the scores for those. Yes. I think anyway, so. he, the, the guy, yeah, the Cinema Wins guy, he, he likes to point, point those out. And, yeah. Right. You know, rightly so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I say Cinema Wins. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Ant-Man. Definitely has a, a different feel to it, especially like the what's considered the the theme from Ant Man. It's um, it sounds like it almost sounds like it could be off of like one of the Ocean's Eleven soundtracks. Mm-hmm. It's a very heisty type yeah. sound and to it, you know, like a you know bank robbery heist type movie, like you know Ocean's Eleven or something like that. Um, um, uh, Spider Man Homecoming. It's interesting because uh, Giacchino did Doctor Strange and Homecoming, and they're completely different sounding, even though it's the same guy. Um, obviously, Doctor Strange is so much different tone wise because of the setting with you know magic and going in you know different dimensions and time travel and that that sort of thing. Um, but then, you know, Spider-Man Homecoming, they, you know, the, if you remember from the opening of the movie where they pull and do their own, he does his own version. <laughs> um, um, and then Black Panther has got its own distinct feel to it. There's two albums for that as well, because there's the, the uh, you know, the, you know, your score music and then the album that Kendrick Lamar did, um, which is more music that will play on the radio uh type music um it's just ACDC it's, it's cool. yeah yeah i mean there's definitely there's popular music that's peppered throughout i mean obviously gardens of the galaxy has the most popular music in it um but you know like your iron mans and even you know in uh spider-man homecoming there's some some more well-known music uh, obviously dr strange um when he's in the uh in surgery you know, listening to to different different uh, uh, songs, um, but yeah, but I I really enjoyed listening to the um, the the scores for all of these movies just because it's not something I've done really. You know, I jumped on Awesome Mix Volume One and Volume Two right <laughs> away, but I've never really actually. Um, sat down and really listened to the the scores and after watching all of the movies I finished over the weekend with Thor Ragnarok <laughs> after watching 17 movies because I haven't decided yet if I'm going to try and see Black Panther again before Thursday um, but at this point after re- re-watching 17 movies over since the beginning of the year um, obviously the storylines and the characters and everything are fresh in my head but just listening to the music was just kind of a an added layer to try to get to you know to know these mm-hmm. movies and the universe better i think because it you know the music is just an added layer and i think it's a very important layer um mm-hmm. to the well, overall mm-hmm. mcu oh and and some of them i didn't buy all of them but i i bought a few i bought uh, doctor strange i have um uh, Age of Ultron, other aliens ones, and mm-hmm. like some of those are just like like you said, like Doctor Strange is very distinctive because it's it is. it's the the mystical, but then it's also kind of the nineteen sixties sort of yes. And um, and Giacchino, he I, he wanted to yeah. he wanted to add he actually wanted to add like um, like Jimi Hendrix mm-hmm. and some other artists, and they couldn't get the rights to some of those music the songs it was too but like if you listen to like the the um the the end credits music for doctor strange it's got a very like hendrix 60s 70s you know kind Mm -hmm. of trippy acid rock (laughs) woodstock type feel to it which i love 
So, cause yeah, I, and I guess that, that was supposed to be sort of like a nod to the time period that the comics were written, were originally written. Yeah. But then also sort of like a, a, an Eastern Asian influence too. Anyway, or so I read. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, even just listening to it, you like, you know, with like little different stringed instrument instruments and some, some kind of chimey and bell type, um, sounds to it. it it's it's definitely it's like well eastern a little you know rock and roll a little well i love the doc the music from dr strange uh, out of all of them that i've listened to that is the one that i keep going back to just to you know as much as i love the avengers theme you know that that theme from uh the first avengers movie which everyone you know kind of equates to the avengers um now, as much as I love that one specific theme, it's one theme as opposed to an entire movie's worth of music and the Doctor Strange. I don't know what it is, but that music, it just, like, it gets to me. It touches me on a visceral level. <laughs> and I'm not entirely sure why. I don't know if it's just because I love, like, that 60s and 70s era type music or what, but just, like... Yeah, I've I've kind of fallen in love with Doctor Strange even more, especially with the music. I'm like, uh, yes, please. I made it ram ringtone. I made one of the songs my <laughs> ringtone. So <laughs> I've had the theme from Game of Thrones as my ringtone for ages, and I finally changed. I'm like, oh, I need Doctor Strange instead. So, so but anyway, uh. The whole point of <laughs> of us doing this was to kind of uh, you know to you know take a look at um, you know where the MCO has gone and um, over uh, the last ten years um, and you know we've already touched on some of it a little bit way back on oh it was early on in the show um, where we kind of talked about m our Marvel, um, like our experiences with just kind of Marvel in general. And I think we talked about some of the movies up to that point, but obviously a lot has been released um, mm -hmm. since then. Ooh, Clark Gregg is on the carpet right now. Hi, Clark. Uh, <laughs> he, got, he managed to drag himself away from the Captain Marvel set just for a little bit. Uh <laughs> Got the evening off. Um, uh, duh, duh, duh. Um, what episode was that? I mean, this was early on in yeah. our... Was it before one of... Um, it was back in... Uh, it was episode nine. So this would have been August of... 2014 <laughs> Wow Ooh. So there's there's been a, f a few things um way back <laughs> since since then uh, But um I thought it would be um kind of fun to just kind of start where it all began and we'll just go through chronologically and yeah we'll spend as much time as it takes, I guess, to talk about, you know, things that stand out to you um, for each film. Um, you know, obviously some of these we've reviewed in depth as they came out, but we didn't start doing that until much later. Because, like, when the first Guardians came out, I think it was just something I'd we squeezed into a regular show. And I spent, you know, like five minutes trying to tell you guys about this movie without spoiling anything and at that point people are like guardians of the what who it's that fat guy from uh, obviously since then we've wisened up to go how awesome guardians of the galaxy is but yeah <laughs> well yes well and then they you know they 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 made something that was awesome so that yeah. helps yeah but well, I, I don't think i don't think the talking raccoon and the cute yeah tree type thing yeah. but I, <laughs> yes. I don't i don't think we've really released till like 
Age of Ultron, Ant Man, Civil War ish, I think. So Yeah. It's it hasn't been that long, so um so hoister girders. Um uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump into it and we're gonna go all the way back to May of two thousand and eight to oh a little movie that got released by the name of Iron Man. Which is hindsight, obviously, 2020. You're like, oh, yeah, Iron Man. It was awesome. It was the start <laughs> of an era. But at the time, people were like, it was so funny because Marvel's been releasing like these, you know, short videos on like YouTube and stuff where mm -hmm. um, little featurettes talking about like, oh, how awesome our fans are and that sort of thing. And uh, one they released, I think, last week it was like a, a 10 year kind of looking back type type short videos like four or five minutes long but it the video starts with like a few weeks or a month before iron man is due to be released i think and the they're interviewing um crap i can't think of his actual name happy uh Peggy? Yeah, no, Happy Hogan. No, John, John Favreau. John Favreau. They're Favreau, talking, thank you. interviewing John Favreau. Brain fart there. He's probably going to be here. Oh, Michael Worker. Uh, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Uh, anyway. Uh, not Michael Worker. Happy Hogan. Uh, Favreau. <laughs> yeah, Favreau. Because um, yeah. he, he directed the first Iron Man, and the, the, you know, the, they're filming him, and he's like, yeah, you know, this... This may be a big flop, it may be a, a mild success, or it could be the start of something, you know, who knows? It could be the start of something like, oh, you you think you had no idea what it was the start of, did you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, they, they honestly, back then, they really had no idea. I mean, the fact that, you know, up to that point, comic book movies hadn't been that strong. You would get uh -uh. one maybe two in a franchise and then it fizzle out, you know, like the, you know, Tim Burton's Batman was yep. really good. The second mm -hmm. Michael Keaton Batman, not so much. I mean, it's still decent, yep. but yeah. not as good well, as the and, first and, one. And here was the thing is like up until then there had been like a smattering of Marvel movies. I mean, X-Men mm -hmm. was really good. Spider-Man did real, did, did well. Um, but Fantastic Four, not so much. Yeah, but Fantastic Four was it was there. Yep. <laughs> and but it's like you know, so it's like oh, and then they, they had the, the Hulk movies, which okay, sure. So it was like there was no reason to think that that Iron Man was going to be anything different mm -hmm. until it was. I mean, and then you know, Dark Knight. Yeah, that was the year Dark Knight came out. Dark Knight was like you know of of superhero movies. If if anyone wants to wants to look up um, on YouTube, it's just some random guy. He hasn't been doing a lot of videos the last couple of years, but that year he did one about the Dark Knight and 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 um, between uh, Batman and Iron Man. And like Iron Man uh, goes to the theater when Dark Knight sh comes, and and like everybody's you know Santa Claus shows up to see it, and then it's the Second Coming because this movie is so <laughs> awesome. And, and Tony is just like, oh, but my movie did well, but nobody wants to watch it anymore. I was like, well, now we do. It's like, because that, you know, it wasn't supposed to be this big thing. It was just another, you know, flash in the pan money grab or something. You know, Marvel mm -hmm. trying to make some money off their properties. But, you know, they've done really well since then, <laughs> obviously, because here we are. <laughs> You know, dying over the hype for Infinity War. Yeah. But the fact that they chose Iron Man, which at yeah. the time, you know, was was kind of obscure. You know, it was it was a it was a, he was a B superhero. Yeah. I mean, that, but they'd already they'd already sold off, you know, Spider Man and X Men the rights to those, so yeah. they're kind of like, well, what else could we do? Yeah, and and they you know they'd already made attempts with the Incredible Hulk. And the TV series was was okay, but you know the the technology, the the movie making technology wasn't quite there yet, as we saw 
right after that with the Incredible Hulk, but we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> and, you know, there have been taps with Captain America, which have not aged well at all. So, and those, I think, probably would have been the most obvious as far as recognizability, but by then they didn't work. So I, I would I would imagine that the thinking was, well, let's do a character that we haven't tried yet. Therefore, if it fails, it just gets added to the fail pile with the yeah. others. Yeah, and, and who cares? Yeah. I mean... I mean, I I had at least heard of Thor, but that's because I used to, I watched Adventures in Babysitting over and over and over and over again when I was a kid. And yeah. the girl in that one is like a big Thor fan girl. Yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't know who any. Of, well, that's a lie. I would have known who the the Hulk was ten years ago because of the Lou Ferrigno Hulk. Um, yes. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I was sheltered but not dead uh, as a child. <laughs> uh, and I knew who Spider Man was. But, I mean, even now, Marvel technically does not own Spider-Man, so uh, they didn't know. They're, working, the time. On, they're working on that. Yeah, they're working on it. <laughs> a, once the check clears, it'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, 10 years ago, I had no idea. Um, well, 10 years ago, they weren't even owned by Disney, were they? No, they weren't, they weren't no, they owned aren't. yet. But even then, you know, I had no idea that this was a thing. That was happening. It just so happens that the literally the same night that I the Iron Man opened, because um, even back then, you know, it was Thursday night late night showings. Now it's gotten earlier and earlier. Now you can go see a movie Thursday night at seven o'clock instead of doing a midnight showing like we had to do back in the day for like the Star Wars prequels. Um, <laughs> when I when I was your age, yeah, uh, we had to go to the movie theater midnight. <laughs> I was up past my bedtime, and I was thankful for it. Mm -hmm, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, but I don't I don't know what time the you know movies were released ten years ago, but it was it was kind of late. But that exact same night was the same night that Chauncey asked me out. Oh. So we we it was our last night of a class we had together. I think I've told the story, at least part of the story on the podcast when talking about you know my history with Marvel. Um, but we had this class together, and it was l the literal last night of class, end of the semester. Where you know class was going to be done, we weren't going to see each other again unless we happened to have a, had a class together the following semester. Um, which we did, but that was only because we were dating. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I probably would have <laughs> never point, taken that you, class. You kind of engineered that. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But at this point, so uh, class ended. He asked me out, and I was like, okay, sure. And I was like, okay, well, I'll find you on Facebook. Um, and then the entire class went out for pizza afterwards. Our professor was like, oh, you know, you guys have been great. We'll go out to pizza, and I'll treat you guys. So we went to uh, pizza place, you know, right near campus, and we're all sitting there chatting in that class and our plans for the summer and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I think Chauncey and I just chatted just a little bit because at that point he's like, oh, I asked her out. If I talk to her some more, she may change her mind. So. <laughs> Oh, poor Chauncey. <laughs> so he, but he was, he, I think he was, telling, he was, he met some of his friends, met him at the pizza place and they're like, yeah, we're going to go to a movie. Like, we're going to go see Iron Man. I'm like, okay, I don't know what that is, but whatever. Um, and then he met afterwards that after that night, he found me on Facebook, friend and me. And then we get on a uh, chat and he's telling me all about Iron Man and how amazing it was. I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't know who that is, but whatever. Um, <laughs> So fast forward a couple of years and, you know, we're married and together by that point. Um, and um, I think by then the first two Iron Mans were out. Um, so it was Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, and then Iron Man 2 were out. Um, like on DVD, I think, at that point. So and I think Thor was getting ready to get released in theaters. Um, so he finally convinces me <laughs> to watch the, the Iron Man's. I think we watched the Incredible Hulk too. Um, so he finally convinces me to watch these movies, and I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, so I watch them, 
like, yeah, it's so entertaining, I guess. Um, and then we get, then he, um, we, uh, he gets the, the harebrained idea to do the Sarge project for our capstone, which I know I talked about in our, our, at episode nine, um, mm. we're talking about how our, our undergrad project was, we built a Disney attraction from the ground up and it was a Marvel theme. It's themed around Captain America called it the Sarge project. Um, and because I am the queen of research, whenever we, you know, we go on vacation or something like that, I have to dive in and research as much as possible. So I'm like, okay, if we're going to do something Marvel, I need to learn more about this stuff. Um, so watching the movies, picking up comics, this, that, and the other thing. We go see Captain America, the first Avenger in the movie theater. So that was the first Marvel movie I saw in theaters. Um, and, uh, I was like, oh yeah, this is good. And then by the time the Avengers came out, I was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> we got to the end of the Avengers and I'm like, oh yes. This is the thing. Looking back. You're like, this is my thing. This is my And that was in 2012. So six years later. <laughs> you're you're over here watching watching the red carpet. Here I am going, sound. ooh, Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> 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 Getting distracted. <laughs> and Don Cheadle too, but ooh, Tom Hiddleston. Uh, yes. Sorry, Cheadle. Uh, so but yeah, so from that that First Iron Man movie, having no idea that this was a thing that was even uh, to now. It's kind of nuts. And to think it all started with Robert Downey Jr. getting his essentially a second lease on life. Um, mm -hmm. Thank uh -huh. goodness. God bless the casting people uh -huh. at Marvel. And they even mention her. And I think they show her in that video. Um, and I don't know if she's been the casting person the entire time. I'd like to think she is. If I ever meet her, I'm going I think, to hug I her. I think so, because they've, they've, so. cause she, she's been listed on all the Marvel casting if I stuff. Ever and I'm meet like, hey, her, that's, that's her. <laughs> I'm going to hug her and give her the biggest pat on the back because the casting for this entire universe has just been fabulous. Uh -huh. absolutely fabulous with the one exception which we'll get to here in a second uh, yeah. I think I know which one you're talking about yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean I, and I honestly I honestly think the casting of Robert Downey Jr. was probably a make or break for this uh -huh. entire thing I honestly think if they cast anybody else I don't think it would have worked the same just it you know he he is Tony Stark. I mean, the parallels between yeah. his life and Stark goes has gone through in the comics um, are yeah. eerily similar. Um, mm -hmm. And thankfully, both have managed to turn their life around. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, you know, he he looks the part, he acts the part. You know, he mm -hmm. just. He is an amazing. It's kind of like actor. where does where does Robert Downey Jr. end and Tony Stark begin, or you know, bit. vice versa? Yes, a little yes. bit, a little bit. So yeah, I I don't know if anyone else was in the running or being considered, um, but uh, if there was, I'm glad that they either just said no, or the casting folks said no. So. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, I can't. I can't imagine anybody watching else watching Iron Man for the first time. We didn't see it in the theaters, but Dad and I had picked up the Blu-ray. Yeah. We watched it, and then when he when he ended with the "I am Iron Man," my Dad and I kind of looked at him like, "You want to start watching this again from the beginning?" Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah. I. Yeah, because when I went, I didn't get to see Iron Man. Um, in theaters either but that's because uh in 2008 i was serving a, a mission for my church and you know just the, it's the mission rules we don't watch movies or anything that's not church related because we're there to do we're, we're there to do a thing so i came home and people were talking about iron man and a bunch of other movies that came out in 2008 i'm just like oh okay and so i'm trying i'm working on getting caught up what i missed and iron man 2 was coming out or it was on its, or you know, it it was it it was on its way in, into theaters somewhere um, when I got home, 
and it might have been 2010. And I was like, well, I want to see that, uh, but I want to see the first one first. So I went out and found the DVD and bought that. And uh, people had said it was really good. And I watched it. And I'm just like, wow. That, and I didn't, I didn't have any high hopes for it. Cause I'm like, well, this isn't X Men. This isn't Spider Man. I don't know what this is. But I'm going to try it out anyway. And I knew Robert Downey Jr. Like, he was that guy who was in the news because of some drug thing. And I didn't really pay that much attention to it. But there were some you know, jokes on late night about it. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it was it was a thing. And it was a couple of years before. And I saw it. And I was like, wow, he's a really good actor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is a really good movie. Yeah. I don't know why I go see Iron Man 2. So I went to the theaters and saw that. And I really enjoyed that. I just, you know, ever since then, I've been, hey, let's go watch, let's go see Marvel. And, mm-hmm. you know, they've just gotten better and better as I've, as they've gone along. And so it was kind of like, because I, I, I kind of got the double dose of it for the first time all at once, just because I'd had to miss it in the theaters. But I'm kind of glad I, I saw it that way. Yeah. Instead of, instead of having to wait for the next one. Yep. And then, and then kind of feel like, oh, they're setting this whole big universe up. That's gonna be interesting. How's that gonna work? And it's <laughs> like this, <laughs> like this, <laughs> just like this. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then after Iron Man was the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was a thing. It was a thing yep. that happened. It helped continue the the universe with the the nice, you know, Tony Stark cameo at the end. Um, and yeah, spoiler alert: Hulk is not Mark Ruffalo the first time. Around. Yeah, I mean, no offense to Edward Norton; Mm-mm. he's a fine actor, <laughs> but um, this wasn't the role for him. I don't think so. It, it it didn't help that again the technology was not there for the Hulk. Now the Hulk especially compared to the Hulk we have now, definitely does not hold up CGI-wise. Although the Hulk in that movie compared to the Abomination looks amazing. (laughs) Because the Abomination is exactly that. It's an abomination to CGI. It is awful. (laughs) It is just absolutely awful. It is not held up. Um, What, you know, time-wise. But, uh... But it's a thing, you know, it's a thing and it happened and, you know, we've moved on. <laughs> I a- think, I think at that point they weren't, they still weren't quite sure what they were doing. They knew what, what they wanted to do, but yeah. just well, the, the and, execution yeah. of it. And plus Edward Norton was kind of not on board with it. So he, I mean, that, you know, obviously they had to recast and yeah. he was, I don't know. I don't know the whole details. No one really does. Yeah. We don't know what happened behind closed the, the, doors. The jokes have been made. Yeah. <laughs> They're so. still kind of funny if you think yeah. about it. But um, It's a thing. It's It's got a, it's Stan, a, it's it got a Stanley cameo. And, you know, that's about yeah. all we can hope for. So. <laughs> More or less, yes. Pretty much. I, so. I remember I was in school and I was in one of the rec um, buildings with the Incredible Hulk playing in the... I didn't really watch it because I, I never liked... Any of the I never liked the 2003 Hulk. I think it was yeah like, that yeah, one Eric was Banner. Weird. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't paying. Yeah, we don't at talk all. about that I, one. It's not in the MCU, so we don't talk about that one. <laughs> yeah. And like I was literally half paying attention because I was doing other stuff, and I looked up and I saw Tony Stark. I was really confused because like, what's he doing here? Yeah. It's like this is an Iron Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, not only setting up the MC- MCU and, you know, essentially creating a, a new era of superhero movies, but it taught people that you do not leave the movie theater until they throw you out. <laughs> you don't leave until the next movie has started playing. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, after that, which... Um, uh, yeah, the the one thing with the Incredible Hulk is you've got the Incredible Hulk, Iron Man two, and then Thor, and um, you know, in, unless you're just a super casual fan, um, those three movies um, actually occur in the same time period. 
um, essentially, with, with a little wiggle room. Um, but especially Iron Man 2 and Thor um, are happening, happening con uh, parallel to each other, happening at the same time. It's called Fury's Big Week. Because Nick Fury had his hands full, so. Um, but Iron Man 2, again, um, you know, not quite as strong as the first Iron Man, but still decent. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, Justin Hammer is a, a sleazeball. Um, yeah. Yeah. But but, it, but but he's also very hilarious. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, and and Mickey Rourke did what he could uh, with yes. what was given to him. Um, all things considering, and it did give us War Machine. So yes, and it yeah. you know the there was a bit of controversy there with with uh, Terrence Howard, you know, essentially getting fired <laughs> uh, for yeah, you know, as, as and then Rody, Don Cheadle but, comes in and. Yeah, but honestly, says, I'm, I think, it, I'm here. It's me. Deal with it. Yeah, yeah. essentially, and I, I honestly, I think, I think Don Cheadle is better as Rhodey. Mm -hmm. So, well, and then Gary Shandling. Yeah, because <laughs> for the senator, oh boy. Yeah, which which later down the line, I mean, he, he's a politician, so he's kind of a, a prick anyway, as he even calls mm -hmm. himself. You know, finding out that his true motivations a little further down the line, you know. The hindsight yeah. it's like oh okay i kind of see where you're coming from motivation wise <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's one of those things it's like you, you, one of the movies releases and like it lays more groundwork and then you look behind and you're like oh i see now uh makes so much it's, more sense exactly. a lot of the that was a lot of the criticism of of, um, of Iron Man too. Is they're like, you know, it's it's you know, it's it, as a movie, as a standalone movie, it doesn't work because there's all this other stuff going on. It's kind of like, well, that's sort of the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you know, and then you know, where we are now, hey, you know, now it works because exactly. it wasn't yes, just an just Iron Man setup. movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's saying, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna share this this movie universe with all these other people," and so you mm -hmm. know, get used to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. which ties us into the movie that came after that, but in universe happening at the same time, the events happening at the same time. Thor, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, brought us uh, Thor and Loki mm -hmm. and Hawkeye. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Which I didn't realize until, like, oh, that's who that guy was. Because I just yeah. remember seeing him and, like, oh, he's just a S.H.I.E.L.D. dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the time, I was like, oh, Hawkeye. You know, who's that? You know, he's kind of a blip and you miss him because he, yep. he doesn't do too much in the movie. But mm -hmm. he gets important yeah. later. And a blink and you miss appearance by Josh Dallas as well. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's right. He's that that was one thing I wish they they could have done was done some more with the Warriors three, yeah, and Lady Sif in the Thor movies because I I like the Thor movies a lot. I just there's there's more that they could do, and mm -hmm. they didn't, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm still wishing for that mini series that I want of the Warriors three and Lady Sif. That would be fun. I mean, Lady Sif did did uh, make an appearance in Agents of Shield. Yep, a couple of times. Twice. Their first season. Twice, yes. Twice. Yes. Yep. And and she's still alive. I was, I was, that was one thing I did some... not like about Thor Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know. She's a little busy, and then that show she's on has got renewed, so it's going to be even longer before they find a, you know, she gets a free moment to try to bring her back, so. Yeah. Dang you, it's... Jamie. And your good acting. Uh, <laughs> so, and the I really wish I was the gal on the per now she is in a sandwich of Mark Ruffalo, Benedict Cumberbatch, Sean Sean Gunn, and Karen Gillan. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> How has she not fainted by uh, now? She's been she's doing a, she's, she's she and the other gal have been doing these carpets for as long as I've been watching them, so she's an old pro. But anyway, okay, back to back to the other movies. So uh, it, you know that is it was a, it was nice because it it got it gave it showed us a little bit of Asgard so we're starting to mm -hmm. dip the toe into getting off Earth 
um, and things from not of Earth um, mm-hmm. getting into the into the universe and introducing Loki. He's he's kind of yes. a, he's kind of a a, 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 a spoke in the cogs as it were mm-hmm. <laughs> several yes, times. He'll mm-hmm. come to be a pain in the backside a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And, you, and you know, a favorite uh, of all the fangirls. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He's a pain in the butt, but you just you can't help but love him. So mm-hmm. it helps that Tom Hiddleston is just you know amazing as Loki, and it's 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 hilarious to think that he auditioned for Thor. Sure. He, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't yeah. see it either. No. Yeah. He's too skinny. He really would have had to. Yeah, he would have really had to bulk up. <laughs> yeah, and I think he would have looked weird. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I, again, casting bless you for getting it right. So because mm-hmm. Hemsworth, great Thor. He's not my cup of tea as far as physique is concerned, but he makes a really good Thor. So. <laughs> oh, oh. and then America, the first Avenger, which is speaking of Hemsworth. Hi, Hemsworth. Um, Shut up on my screen. Uh, Captain America. I think they randomly comment on what's going on. And Kevin awesome. Feige. So if you if you if you <laughs> miss play by play. miss the red carpet, Rachel's giving you the the play by play. Yeah. Currently, as, as I catch things out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, oh, it's speaking of Thor and Kevin Feige, and I'm pretty sure that's the same suit that is appears in Lou's picture. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> Captain America: The First Avenger, uh, which was the first one I saw in theaters. Um, that's the first one I saw in 3D. So, I remember, yeah. yeah. I just, I just remember because we, like, our project, um, you know, the Sarge project, we were building it on just what we had seen and heard from the movie trailers. Um, we were basing our entire plot line on the fact that, um, based on what we saw in the trailers, Howard Stark, Tony Stark's father, was involved at least some somewhat in the creation of Captain America, but we didn't really know just how involved and how um, how close he and Steve Rogers would become. So we were basing this on the fact that it wasn't just like a oh we're gonna put a little Stark Easter egg in here that Howard was a bigger part and he and Steve were friends. So when we went and saw the movie and found out that that was actually the case, we all took a big sigh of relief. Like, oh, because at that point we were, <laughs> we only, we only had like a couple months at most to finish everything. <laughs> and there's only so much, so many years and issues of comic book lore you can. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we were like, oh, okay, they were friends. That's good. At, at that point, at that point. <laughs> Just kind of like, um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, we were trying to keep it, you know, MCU in universe because, well, yes, because by then Disney had bought Marvel. So, because I think Captain America the First Avenger was the first one to be released post purchase. Um, yeah, it well, it's it was it was still under the Paramount banner, but. Disney had distribution rights. Money had been exchanged. So, yeah, but yeah, I mean the 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 the, the thing had happened, yeah. and there was you know it was just the the, the official, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. At that point, the announcement had been made. Disney going, yeah, we're gonna drop a crap ton of money, and buy everything that Fox and Sony don't already own. Uh, all the things <laughs> all the things so but yeah uh it was it was quite fun to, to to experience my first marvel movie in the in the theaters and that and that it brought us uh that version of howard stark at some point they're gonna have to explain in universe how howard stark grows like another foot because i'm pretty sure that dominic is a lot shorter <laughs> Than the gentleman that plays Inserts, the older, yeah, risers. <laughs> just like Robert Downey Jr. does in real life. Just a little lift in the yes. shoe. <laughs> no one will ever know. It's just something the Stark guys do. They just need a little lift, a little height help. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Make themselves the ladies love taller. it. So, but yeah, uh, but uh, but that uh, that brought us uh, obviously Steve Rogers, played by Chris Evans. Um, 
and uh, introduce us to Bucky Barnes, which would be important. Um, that introduces mm -hmm. us to the Tesseract, which has become very important. Uh, Miss Carter. <laughs> yes, and a certain, yes. certain Peggy Carter. Mm -hmm. who really got gypped when it came to TV. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, 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 uh, I would say this is a discussion for another episode, but we've already discussed Agent Carter, so go find those, uh, those episodes, mm -hmm. podcast episodes. Yes. Um, but, uh, but it, it's, it's good. It's, a, again, it's an origin story, um, but it's a good origin story. Chris Evans, again, perfect casting as Steve Rogers slash Captain America, um, you know, uh, and then Wonder Woman went and ripped it off several years later. Just gender <laughs> reversal roles. Uh, <laughs> um, and then um, at that point, we've got, uh, I guess at that point, we have all the origin stories that at least Marvel thought we needed and uh -huh. brought us to the Avengers, which was... Amazing. It's my favorite. It's still my favorite. And curse you, Joss Whedon. <laughs> yes, Joss Whedon tried to kill us all a little. In a good way. <laughs> yeah. Killing Phil Coulson. Thankfully, it didn't stick. Although, although ABC is trying to change that. Yeah, like TV. As Talbot said, you die more than anyone I know, Phil. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that that was the the you know at that point, you know the MCU the movies they're they're trugging along, and you know people are watching them they're making money Disney has spent <laughs> big old buckets of cash, you know to to buy <laughs> buy these properties, um, and, and getting big old buckets of cash back in return. That too. Yes. I, I they, think, they, they have more than made their money back. I, I think their return on investment has really paid off. But, I mean, people were like, you know, at this point, a superhero movie with this many superheroes was unprecedented. Yeah. You know, people enough. thought well, that well, they were and not nuts. just not just superhero movies. I mean, think of any other genre that could have done this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they'd all had their own movies. They all had, but, but the movies all existed in the same continuity and you know they all got along it's not and it's you know and it's not just i mean the, the, all these stars there's a lot of egos in that room mm -hmm. even without mm -hmm. actual ego yeah. <laughs> but well, you know, yeah. they, look at the ego they all, oh. you know, chrissy go ahead and finish oh you know just you know they they they're all the stars in their own right now they all have to star in one movie how are they gonna do that and then they did it so that's definitely something to to note. Mm -hmm. Well, and then the excitement, too, of Joss Whedon directing this because he did the TV Buffy, Angel, Firefly. He had Serenity, which was his own creation for a movie, but this is his first big franchise that wasn't his own. <laughs> and for him to direct that, I think there was, you know, what? how was he going to do? Mm-hmm. It off. <laughs> yeah. And he he made it work. He figured it mm -hmm. out. I mean, it's, I think doing something like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you know, those TV series probably helped because yes. it's a gang of people working together. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. you've got the Scooby Gang and Buffy. You've got Angel and you know his crew. You've got the you know the 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 crew and Firefly. Um, mm -hmm. So that probably helped a lot. So oh, the fact that he likes to kill people, Phil Coulson, mm -hmm. Exhibit A. Uh, no. But uh, again, thankfully, it did not stick. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Thank you which, for Tahiti. Yeah, which I mean, at the time, uh, by then I was I was emotionally invested into the universe, um, and I loved Iron Man. I wasn't quite emotionally invested into Coulson yet. <laughs> once once Agents of Shield came came around and started watching that and I realized just how awesome Coulson is as a character. Especially considering he is an original. He was one mm -hmm. made up for the MCU. Mm -hmm. Um 
you know, just to, looking back, first Iron Man, you know, with the introdu introduction of Coulson before the word, you know, the name S.H.I.E.L.D. was even dropped. He was still calling it Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. And Pepper Potts would be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, now I'm much more emotionally invested in Phil Coulson. And he's right up there with going on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, but that is again a discussion for another episode but um i i think if i had been then his death probably would have affected me more but now looking back you know i i'm i'm mad that we decided to do that but at the same time i can't be that mad because i know it doesn't stick <laughs> so mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah they just they did such a good job of balancing out um, the different characters and, you know, getting the storylines to, to fit together so that people's screen time and their interactions with each other make sense. We got Mark Ruffalo as Banner slash the Hulk, which I like to say with Marvel, yes. um, third time's a charm when it comes to cat. It was, it was our third Bruce Banner. Hulk beat the crap out of Loki. Yeah. You know, as far <laughs> as, me every time. Yeah, I mean, as far Michael. as... As far as, uh, you know, movie representations, modern movie representations of Bruce Banner slash the Hulk, not necessarily Marvel owned or MCU, but third time's a charm with Ruffalo. Yeah. Eventually, mm -hmm. we, you know, as we get further along, it'll be third time's a charm for Spider. It'll be third time's a charm for the Fantastic Four. So, yes. <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. But, um, so it's kind of funny. We've said it before, but like, the last two Fantastic Four, both Firestorm, Firestorm, um, what's his name? Oh, the Human Torch. Silver Surfer? Yeah, the Human no, Torch. The Human Torch has gone on to play someone else in the MCU. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. yep. So whoever gets cast as the Human Torch this third time around, sorry, you're stuck with the role because they're going to get right the third time mm -hmm. around. So I hope you like playing... Um, that character because you're going to be them for a while more than likely so uh, no. and of course with the Avengers the and purple carpet that's going on right now is that lovely post credit scene where we see Thanos' big smiling purple face <laughs> Again, we had no idea. People were just like, oh my god, it's Thanos! What does he want? Because at that point, we had the Tesseract, but had no, there no inclination of Infinity at that point. I mean, the, even the term or Infinity so Stones does not get dropped till the first Guardians. So, mm -hmm. Or for those of us completely in the dark about the Marvel Comics history, it's like, who is that big purple giant guy? Yeah, I had no idea. Shrug. Yeah, I had no idea. I was like, I was like, who's that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no. uh, and then uh, after that, again, it's a thing. Yep. <laughs> Um, it, Dark I, Darcy's back, and yes, still can't Darcy. Sing I, I do, I do love me some Darcy. I, I missed her in Ragnarok. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, mew mew, mew mew. <laughs> um, but it, it again, it does uh, introduce another Infinity Stone. Not that we knew that's what it was at the time. Um, it was the Ether. Oh, so it's important for that. And again, it, um, it introduces you know more of the cosmic you know, type of stuff that we need to know as we get further down the line. Um, it's still one of my absolutely favorite Stan Lee cameos in all the MCU. <laughs> Can I have my shoe back? <laughs> so it's got that going for it. Lovely Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tie-in. Because we went and saw... Thor the Dark World and you get the post credit scene of the creature running around knocking crap over and you know the you know Greenwich, Greenwich Village, Greenwich Park whatever uh, 
has gotten completely, you know, demolished with the fight between Thor and Malekith and everything. And the, you see the creature running around and there's a shield right after that. And it's Simmons talking about uh, Thor and essentially kind of alluding to the dark world. And I forget exactly what she says. She's like, you know, full of you know, magic and blah, blah, blah. And then it gets to the actual, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. She's like, and a big old mess to clean up. And that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> and then cleaning up after Thor. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Exactly do we send the bill to? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then after that is uh, kind of the big one of the you know at this point like the MCU is kind of trugging along they're laying ground stones in this case infinity stones uh, <laughs> for for the future and then we hit Captain America Winter Soldier and everything just kind of goes <laughs> yeah completely <laughs> someone grabbed the steering wheel and went nope turn <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, is this the end of a phase and the start of a new one, or am I off by a little... I don't know. It's hard, it's no. hard to say, because it's like, so much big happens in this movie mm. that you're like, it feels like it should be, but then at the same time, you're like, yeah. that should be Avengers movies? I, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I kind of... I kind of quit uh, trying to keep track of all of them, because yeah, I just... Yeah, like, I don't yeah. know. It's, it's all one, just one big, happy lump of feels i mean the, the phases mm -hmm. to me are not you know yeah. that that big a deal but i mean yeah winter soldier was a game changer as far as yeah. the storytelling goes i mean everything just kind of went darker but not in a mm -hmm. dc kind of way it's still mm -hmm. the end you know the marvel movies that we love there's still the jokes and the easter eggs and the stanley cameos and that sort of thing um but just the overall tone with the reveal of Hydra still in existence. Yeah. And it's just like, Ugh. Things are starting to get a little bit more yeah. serious. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because I think in the last, like last couple of weeks or so, I think on my Time Hop app, it, it popped up um, post Winter Soldier. My tweets that I'd screen captured from Clark Gregg saying that if you had not seen Winter Soldier and went ahead and watched the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode that aired after it, that it wouldn't spoil anything. Oh, that's right, because I remember we talked about it on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He lies. <laughs> I love Clark Gregg. Yeah. He's a big old liar. Like, yeah. It, it, it shows up on my time hop, too, like my Facebook posts, like, while watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., like, me putting in all caps, if you have not seen Winter Soldier, do not watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's a big old spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> big old spoiler that starts with the letter H. <laughs> and ends in draw. Double H. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And it rhymes with Rita. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Not really. <laughs> no. But yeah. The Winter Soldier. The Return of Bucky. The reveal of, of Hydra. Um, the the death. I'm doing air quotes here. The death of Nick Fury. Because uh, mm -hmm. again, at this point, deaths in the MCU, they don't stick. Uh, yeah. That will change dead later. Is, dead. But... <laughs> Um, is uh, is, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Uh, so, but then all that also helped with Agents of Shield because I, I mean, I was loving Agents of Shield from, you know, go. But... It, it it took a little while for it to really find its feet. I mean, yeah. it was good as sort of a monster of the week or you know, yeah. bad guy of the week sort yeah. of show. But really, what what brought it was. Oh, it's the, um, the the whole Hydra twist, and that's what they've been doing to be was it was deal with the 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 dichotomy between Shield and Hydra, and yeah. and who do you trust? And we really don't know. 
so that's and they were like, at, at the beginning people were all like what is this shield show like why why do we even have it and it you know it took a while for it to get there but it did and been enjoying it ever since mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well and just the cast of characters oh yeah for the ensemble mm-hmm. oh, my gosh yeah. <laughs> and, and even then with, with agents of shield i mean i don't think it's the same casting as the the movies but again the casting for agents of shield has been absolutely amazing you know, obviously Clark Gregg is kind of the 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 top of the pyramid. I mean, everything was made to revolve around the return of, of Phil Coulson and real finding out that he's not actually dead. But, you know, the casting choices that they have made have been just again mm-hmm. you know, I don't I mean, think I can't see anybody else besides Ming Na when yeah. playing Agent Melinda May. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, and it, and the fact that you know, one, it's a it's a essentially a comic book based TV show, mm-hmm. um, which you know, other than the CW, is not something that's really been able to have legs on network TV, um, and you can completely different. But again, you're talking Marvel versus DC. Um, mm-hmm. But DC, they've done a really good job with the TV side of it, with multiple shows being successful, mm-hmm. unlike Marvel, where they've not quite got there, except for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, Agent Carter. Mm-hmm. Agent Carter was really good. It was just a victim of really bad marketing. Seasons, at least. Yeah, yeah. And yes. we don't talk about Inhumans. We've already done that, so... Um, yeah, check out that podcast. <laughs> Locked off for the win. Um, but yeah, so Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, it's it's a comic book-based movie, or TV series, pulled from the movies, um, with this amazing cast. And, you know, you've got old and younger, you've got white, you've got black, you've got Asian, you've got British, you've got Scottish, you know, Um You've got men, you've got women, you've, I mean, you've got some amazing women on this show. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And c- continues to just, you know, get better with the, some of the women they bring in, whether they're, you know, good guy or bad guy. The, the strength and diversity of the, the women that they brought in. And then the, the men do a good job, too, of, you know, mm-hmm. helping. But, I mean, the women in Age of the Shield are pretty awesome. So. Yes. They're. I hope they come back. I hope, I hope. Uh, <laughs> and I hope Phil doesn't die. Uh, no. um, and then we we kind of the kind of tone and feel once again takes a turn with the release of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which was unlike anything we had had up to that point, and everybody's like, like I said earlier, they're like Guardians. What? Who? It's that guy from Parks and Recreation. Uh, <laughs> Talking raccoon? What's this all about? Yeah, which, speaking, speaking Guardians of the Galaxy, <laughs> Vin up and is being interviewed. He's wearing... Groot! He, Groot! Yeah, he's wearing a, like, white outfit, and he's got tree branches sticking off of his coat. <laughs> Oh, oh boy! Okay, I I may need a picture of this because I I'll have to show yeah. it to Jared when we're. <laughs> and they move, or some of them move. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. But... <laughs> he is Groot. <laughs> Speaking mm-hmm. of Groot, <laughs> oh. yay Groot! Who, who knew we yes. would fall in love with a talking raccoon in a tree? Yes. <laughs> Only Marvel make that up. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you thought our reactions were bad when we got emotionally attached to it. He's yep. a true. <laughs> yes. All I says is, I am Groot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Again, another death doesn't stick. Kind of. Depends on how you kind look of, at yes. it. I mean, according to James Gunn, that Groot technically is dead, and the Groot we have now is his son. But he looks the same, and he talks the same, and he... It, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No. Oh. And Zoe Sunday. If, yeah. if you think it was the sun, you think you would have picked up 
a few more vocabulary words. You would think, but he, you know, he seems he seems to have almost like regressed back to a child, and now he needs to mature again. So, mm -hmm. but he's still the same group. So anyway, yeah. James Gunn, though he's he's the man in charge. He would know. So, um, okay, I, I like how even when the man in charge says. Oh, he actually died. We don't believe it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> or I don't, I don't accept that into my head canon. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Well, how many times have we found out from head guy in charge that, oopsies, I told you a little white lie. Yeah. <laughs> Certain point of view. Yes. Right. They've done that too. I mean, they've boldface lied to us to to keep <laughs> stuff from getting spoiled. So. Mm -hmm. And what's weird about that is. Not even really mad about about it. Yeah, mm -mm. <laughs> not really. So, but yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. It was just, it was. It's so different, yet it fits right in with the rest of everything else. Obviously, awesome mix, Volume One. Oh yes. On repeat, you know, every Blue Suede. I'm sure is appreciating the the increase in royalty checks. Yes, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure Redbone too with "Come and Get Your Love" because I can remember sitting in the movie theater for that, yeah, and seeing Peter Quill just bopping out. I'm like, okay, yep, yeah, I'm <laughs> sold. Somewhere, Let's somewhere, go on this ride. <laughs> yeah, somewhere, you know, someone at Sony somewhere was like, "Boss, is there any way we could make the Walkman again?" <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they probably looked at it and just realized financially it probably didn't make too much sense in the long term. But you know, some mind that I had when yeah. I was little, yeah. and it was almost like it looked almost like the sports version too. <laughs> yeah, and the the Guardians is where we finally get Infinity Stones finally gets name dropped thanks to the collector. Mm -hmm. So we learn. Yes about the six infinity stones and their history and all that stuff. And we finally see an infinite, uh, you know, a infinity stone in its actual form. Um, so, which yep. that one's the power stone, right? The one in Guardians of the Galaxy, think, the purple one, I, I think. think so. I think so. Is that the power gem? And then we get to meet the two warring siblings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of which is on my screen right now, right standing next to Vin Diesel. Hello, Gamora. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, and Karen, and Karen Gillan. <laughs> Who surprised the heck out of us all by shaving her head. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and we learn more about Thanos. So... Mm -hmm. Which is important. Thanos isn't too nice of a guy. No, he's not. He's not... He's, again, with Disney movies, not the best when it comes to parents. Uh, yeah, no, not father of the year. That's hey. good. Excelsior. Excelsior. <laughs> I was slightly... Oh, I'm, glad, I'm glad... Yeah, I'm glad Stan made it. Yeah. yeah. He usually does. There's only been a couple where he's missed, so... He didn't make it yeah, onto, the, onto the live stream at the Black Panther premiere, but uh, he was there, so... But yeah, it's good to see. Him. He's like Mr. <laughs> Rogers. He's got like five sweaters in his closet and he just cycles through them. You so. go with what works. Yeah. I love Stanley. Uh, you know, I just had a random vision of Stanley being like, um, oh, excuse me, um, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I don't know why that is popping my head. If that's not fan art, someone. Yes. In the mystery, like Mister Rogers, instead of yep. instead of trolley in the land of make believe, he's got like, uh, I don't know, something, yeah, some other vehicle. Mister Lee's neighborhood. Mister, yeah, Mister Lee's that galaxy. Has, that has yes. to be a thing. I'm gonna have to go check Deviant Art later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it can be fun and scary at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so, <laughs> tangents, uh, what's next? Uh, Age of Ultron, Avengers, Age yes. of Ultron, so. Which, Age of Ultron really oh, feels like it's setting up the next oh, yeah. phase yeah. of everything. It's kind of, kind of the, the, the transition, I guess. Yeah, yeah. which. And I can, again, I remember it's, when the trailers came yeah. out for that, we all talked about how creepy that, no strings on me. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Like Spader. Yes. Oh, my. 
and kudos for casting him as the voice of Ultron. Yeah. Ultron. Yeah. Yeah, he is, he's really good as the vo voice of Ultron. So, mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, it's uh, yeah. Some people panned it. Um, I mean, as far as the um, the the bigger universe, it's actually quite an important. Um, yes, and it has um, two. Very as much as people complain about the lack of tie-ins from the movies to the the TV, Age of Ultron has two of the biggest tie-ins to Agents of Shield. But if mm -hmm. you aren't watching Agents of Shield, you don't know that. If all no. you watched was Age of Ultron, mm -hmm. you had no idea how important Agents of Shield was to the plot. Of they would have figured it out. Mm -hmm. to get the plot to where they needed it to. But mm -hmm. as far as the bigger universe is concerned, because the whole reason the Avengers knew where Loki's scepter was is because of Phil. Yep. Phil told Maria Hill. Hill told, told the Avengers. Yep. And Nick Fury showing up at the end on that helicarrier. Where do you think he got that helicarrier from? Phil Coulson. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and that was a no on the fish tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so. it, it it did, and it did. Uh, so you know, the Avengers, when if and when they find out Phil is alive, they can thank him. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm still well, waiting for that. That's going to be one spectacular, <laughs> yeah. especially with Tony. Yeah. <laughs> mhm. Mm yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, yeah, Bill, it, Phil's gonna have some explaining to do on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little. We ever get there? Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, so yeah, if if you did not know that, then you need to go watch Agents of Shield. <laughs> mm -hmm. Go watch Agents of Shield yeah. up until go and pick up the, the season the rest of the way and you will know exactly what we're talking about. So Yep, and I think you can do a search on our, Theta on protocol. our web page because we've got the breakdown of what to watch for episodes, movie episodes, yep. and you're good. Yep, yep, yep. No. And, it, and it did um, it did introduce us or brought us um, Scarlet Witch and mm -hmm. Quicksilver for a second. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> That is a death that uh, has that. stuck. That, that is a death that will stick at least until the until Marvel owns the X Men. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely. So that is a death Which that will might stick. not be too much longer. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll probably right. still, it'll probably still stick though, because I mean they had Quicksilver yeah. and then they killed him, so it's like, yeah, it, that's that's an emotional like thing for Wanda. So I think mm -hmm. to bring him back would do her a disservice i think yeah yeah assuming she lives <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes yeah and it and speaking of of wanda it also brought us vision yes yes so, which paul bettany went from making big old bags of cash for going and working in the recording studio for like half a day doing all the voice for jarvis to <laughs> <laughs> to be vision <laughs> be interesting to find out which he prefers uh, yes. I'm pretty sure he said he prefers um, just going and recording for a couple hours and then getting the bag of cash <laughs> I'm thinking so yeah. I, I don't blame him I, no, it's no, a pain no for me just putting on dog. my normal makeup I yeah. couldn't stand, imagine yeah I mean so, some, of the, some of the actors of this people like Paul Bettany and uh, Dave Batista, um, the the amount of makeup that they have to do for their characters is they've got way more patience than I do. I don't care how big the paycheck is. I, yeah. I get I get cramps and itchy and fidgety and hungry and all sorts of things that I don't know if I can handle to yeah. the amount of time they makeup. spend in a makeup chair. Make a put on and then make up take off because I'm sure it's just about as long. Yeah. <laughs> if not longer. <laughs> yeah. Well, usually taking off is a little 
is a little a little easier. Although it's it's funny considering you know how much time like someone like Dave Batista has to spend to become Drax, and I think mm-hmm. that I mean he's entitled to his opinion, but um, Christopher Eccleston and Hugo Weaving complaining about the makeup respectively. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Drexy got nothing on you. <laughs> yeah, it's like go talk to Batista and then see if you still want to complain. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but yeah, let's see Ultron, and then uh, again another the the next entry, um, kind of in the same vein of Guardian of the Galaxy, where people are like really, is this going to be good? And then everyone was pleasantly <laughs> surprised, except for me, that it was, because I knew it was going to be good, is Ant-Man. Yes, uh, yes. So I, yeah, I knew. bring back Mr. Pena. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. know. It's like... I, as as the... As the all, all the memes, all the memes saying, bring him back to do a recap. Yeah. For. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, it, like, I agree. Like the like the Bud Light, but I don't remember what beer company is. But like the beer commercial said, everybody loves Paul Rudd. So, mm-hmm. and it, it, and another Parks and Recreation al- uh, alumni. So mm-hmm. he wasn't a regular like Chris Pratt was, but he was on Parks and Rec a few times. So you got that. But yeah, and, Aunt, and then Aunt casting Man. Michael Douglas, yeah. and then being able to bring back Haley Atwell. As yes, Peggy Carter, um, and getting some more of that backstory. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping maybe that we'll get a little bit more of of Peggy. Although, because that flashback was what 1980 something. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think eighty five, eighty seven ish. So. Again, because Agent Carter got canceled, we don't know all of Peggy's timeline completely. But mm-hmm. I, maybe by the '90s, she may be retired from Shield by then, so we might not see her in Captain Marvel. So maybe like consultant work. Maybe, maybe. So we'll see. Um, but Ant Man, it was fun. Like I was saying with the music and. It, it definitely fits because it is it's it's a kind of a heist movie i mean it's still a marvel mm-hmm. superhero movie but it's it's kind of a oceans 11 you know robbery type heist movie mm-hmm. at the same time you know where they got you yeah. know as as hank pym says i need you to break into some place and steal some yeah stuff it's like, you, yeah, it's like you, you didn't think i'd actually let you break into my house yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much Pretty much, so and they, some really good jokes in Ant Man. Oh, yes. It's definitely one of the funnier um, movies in the MCU, uh, and the fight between him and and Falcon. Oh, <laughs> yes, is just <laughs> ah, bloody brilliant, bloody brilliant. Mm-hmm. I love it. Well, great, great cameo from one of the Avengers, and yes. fu- a, a funny scene. So. Um, and then, uh, and then everything, once again, take the steering wheel and go, <laughs> turn everything yep. sideways with yep. Captain America Civil War. Yep. Try to avoid the big crash yep. like a NASCAR. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Here comes the big one. Watch out. Cause mm-hmm. We get Captain America Civil War, which we finally get Spider-Man back in the MCU, yep. kind of. Sony was nice enough to lend him out. At the moment, so hopefully, maybe eventually, Sony will be like, "Yeah, just give us a bag of money, and you can have Spider-Man back completely." But not yet. Um, but uh, but we did get Spider-Man again, third time's a charm when it comes to casting. <laughs> so Tom mm-hmm. Holland as Peter Parker slash slash Spider-Man, as as Lou said in in uh, uh, is it Lou, I think. Who was I? Was it Lou or is it Travel in the Vortex? Someone's podcast I was talking to where they were talking about the MCU movies and the the Spider Mans before Tom Holland, where you know Tobey Maguire, you know they could get it right 
halfway with Tobey Maguire and they got it half right with Andrew Garfield, but they couldn't quite get someone that could do both Peter Parker and Spider-Man uh, together in the, the same actor. And they finally got up with Tom Holland. So he's a great yeah. Peter Parker and he's a really good Spider-Man. So. And then Cassie, <laughs> the Marissa Tomei as the aunt was brilliant. Yes. <laughs> Spider-Man, Peter Parker finally looks his age, and Aunt May is hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's a cool aunt. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. So, but C Civil War was just, you know, e even as crazy side, you know, detours that we've taken with, you know, Hydra and everything, Civil War was just kind of the, where the feels really started to get to... You know, nobody that we really cared about, you know, nobody died, but just seeing these characters that we've known become to love and see them become, you know, this amazing team become divided so yeah. harshly was oh. just like, Tough. It, mm -hmm. it's hard. It's hard on the feels. It was really hard on the feels. And I mean, in Monday morning quarterbacking, what happened in... Sokovia that could have you know best of intentions it just <laughs> bad timing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. yeah so. but uh, <clears throat> you know more character develop we got some more character introductions Black Panther yes introduction of Black Panther pretty awesome so mm -hmm. um, get some more some more Bucky um Yep. Which was which is good, and all the all the uh, Sebastian Stan fans are all like, ah, yeah. You know. <laughs> Bucky laying off, you know. Now now he's laying off the eyeliner. <laughs> it's again not my cup of tea, but you know whatever. No, uh, yeah. Sorry, Sebastian, you're a nice dude. I'm sure it's not my cup of tea. Um, but uh. It was a, uh, it was, that one's just a lot of feels. Civil War is just a lot of feels. So again, some, mm -hmm. some good scenes, the airport fight, probably one of the best battles fights in the entire MCU um, up to that point. I'm sure we're going to get some epic fight scenes in Infinity War, but definitely the airport battle is really high up there as far as, um, as uh, fight scenes are concerned, uh, underoos, uh, <laughs> really good. Um, but yeah, the, the, the feels, especially with, with, you know, the, everything with, between Cap and, and Stark is just, uh, you know, so. hopefully, yeah. <laughs> hopefully once they see each other again, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. We can set aside our differences to save the universe. <sighs> yes. So. Um, and then after Civil War, we kind of uh, we uh, changed the tone again with one of my top favorite movies in the uh, MCU with Doctor Strange, <laughs> where we start to get really out there as far as you know, getting into the cosmic aspect of the MCU. So, um, which we did review Dr. Strange as a, uh -huh. uh, a whole episode. So people can go and go and listen to the, listen to that here, a full mm -hmm. review. Um, I love Dr. Strange. Uh, yeah. The fact that the fact that Benedict Cumberbatch is really good to look at does not hurt any. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> he makes a really good Dr. Strange. Uh, but it is a good movie. It's visually, mm -hmm. it is amazing. It just looks really good. Um, it's definitely not one that they could have done earlier oh, no. in the run. Just the technology would not have been there it's for them to be able to do things like the, 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 you know, the mirror universe and, you know, the, the spells with the sparks and everything. Yeah. Um, well, and the, almost the inception tape with the moving yeah. and the bricks and all that other yeah. Yeah, that, that could not have been done um, earlier. So um, I'm glad that, that, you know, it worked out so that that's, that's when 
uh, you know, they managed to their Infinity Stone uh, with the, the Time Gem, um, which is kind of important. Maybe more important than we realize, depending on where they decide to do, what they decide to do uh, plot-wise with Infinity War. Um, so, but d definitely one of my favorites um, in, the, in the MCU. Um, and then Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So, again, Awesome Mix Volume 2. Another yes. set of amazing music. Thank you, James Gunn. You have really good taste. Um, ego. Yeah, Kurt Russell. <laughs> Kurt Russell is ego. Uh, I loved that bit of casting. I mean, you want to you wanna talk about great casting? Yeah. Uh -huh. Which, you know... Mm -hmm. So much fun. Mm -hmm. so, well, so then fun. just the I, plot I, twist about Eagle. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know. I mean, yeah, I love that. I love mm -hmm. that movie. Yeah. You know, like 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 the first Guardians, it's one I'm like, I go back and rewatch this so many times because it's, it's just, it's comfort food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Really good. Really good. Unfortunately... Another character death that definitely will, or at least, or at least, uh, pull the wool over our eyes to make sure that it stayed a surprise with the death of Yondu. So, yeah, which I didn't but realize that until after the fact. I didn't uh -huh. put two, two and two did not make four until after the fact because they by then yeah. they would they were filming Infinity War, and mm -hmm. there are images of Michael Rooker as Yondu on set for Infinity War, and they did that on purpose. So that it would not give away Yondu's death, because uh -huh. you know people figure, oh, if they're there filming, then they're alive. Oh yeah, nope. uh -huh. yeah, no, no, not so much. Yep, well, they know what they're doing, don't yeah. they? Which knowing yeah. that now, and then seeing images taken when I know they're filming the second half of Infinity War or Avengers Four or whatever you know we're calling it until we get the actual title. Um, seeing images when I know they're filming that half of the two-parter. Now I question every image, and every character I see, because mm -hmm. I'm like, Are right? they really unless alive? We're getting fl unless he was there to film flashback footage. Who knows? No, they, they, no, they, have, speculation. they, they, have, they, have, they have said that they, they had Rooker on set just to hide the fact that Yondu dies ah. in, in Garden. We pull, pull the fast one on you. No, but then that makes me question everything. <laughs> so. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll wait till movie. Yeah, we'll wait till that movie comes out and yeah. be the judge of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but at least Yandu got the redemption that he deserved at the end of Guardians too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, cameo appearance by Sylvester Stallone. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so far, if a, if a character death has kind of you know got me in the feels. That's probably up there. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. No. Oh. And then uh, now we're getting to the last year. Well, Guardians, that was last year too. But getting closer uh -huh. to <laughs> my, now, <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming. So, yep. finally, Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that was fun. Yes. yes. It's a good one. And a great anti-villain Played yeah. by Michael Keaton. Yeah, with the vulture. Yep. Which you actually, you know, you feel for the guy. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. We had that discussion, actually. Yes. <laughs> we we did. It. We uh -huh. did indeed. Yeah. Chauncey and I watched it last week and we were talking about uh, vulture afterwards. I'm like, yeah, it's like you can you can kind of see where the guy's coming from, you know. He's just he's uh -huh. trying to provide for his family and it's it's um you know, it's and it's it's not very often we see villains in the MCU live to see them go to jail or right. uh, other than yeah. Loki. Or or not come from somewhere where they've got a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. So mm -hmm. um so yeah, it was a, a Inter interesting way they did they did things plot wise, but I, I think it still works. Um, oh yeah. So, um, and then 
uh, Thor Ragnarok. Oh, boy. <laughs> Which, <laughs> Which, you want to talk about a tone shift for yeah. Thor yes. movies? Yeah. 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 Oh, like, like I, you know, after it came out and watched it, and, like, because people going into the into it were like, but it's so bright and flashy, and they're playing rock music in the trailer, and, you know, all this crazy stuff. It's like, this isn't the Thor that we're used to. I'm like, well, that's true, but... You have to look at where they're headed, and you know we're now we're full we're full into the cosmic galaxy magic mm-hmm. part of the the plot, the bigger plot, um, and this is also the probably last <laughs> bright spot before crap yes, hits the fan. Yes, for the storm because mm-hmm. I noticed. With that theme shift, I noticed when they were showing with the trailers regarding the galaxy and then Thor Ragnarok, I'm like, there's definitely a bright I like they're, this, but... They're trying to butter us up it, before they pull yeah. out our hearts and crush it like someone yeah. on Once it's Upon like, a Time. Now I'm getting worried. Yeah. How bad is this going to be? Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. imagination is bad enough as it is already. Yeah. Yes. yes. It's, like the, it's like the cliche that someone knows they've done something wrong. To like their spouse, like, you know, they crash the car or something and they, they know that the fallout's going to be bad. So they do things like buy them flowers and (laughs) make make dinner, dinner, clean clean the laundry. Yeah, that sort of thing. What'd you do? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I feel right now. I kind of feel like I'm being buttered up because someone's done something bad, Russo brothers. Joe yeah, we won't find Anthony. out how bad until a few days from now. Yep. <laughs> but back to uh, Thor Ragnarok. It was a good movie. Uh-huh. I love that movie. Oh, yes. It was. Mm-hmm. It is a fun movie. It wasn't, and not, I'm not just saying that just because I watched it two days ago. I really love that movie. <laughs> I really like it. It's it's really good. Uh, yeah, you got Loki being Loki. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he and he, Loki not doing too good of an impersonation of his father. Yeah, <laughs> that is so. Funny, I know by the though. end of it, or you know, with there, you're just like, okay, we're not that stupid. Yeah, yeah. it's so funny though, where you know, know. Thor shows up, no. he's like, oh crap, and the play, yep. yeah, you know, with <laughs> the play, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the giant <laughs> statue of Loki. Yep. Uh, Matt Damon playing Loki. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. And mm. it, it, it's definitely very humorous oh, yes. compared to, again, if, you, if you're like, you know, if you were to take the different movies in the MCO, MCU and be like, these are the, you know, the ones with the most humor and these are the ones with the best music and these are the ones with the best character development these are the ones with the best villains you know you get some that they would overlap um Mm -hmm. but you know thor ragnarok's definitely in the the funny Mm -hmm. funnier category but it also has a really good villain too i mean hella kate blanchett is hella is yeah yeah i love her and i hate her <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and then and then Loki wanting to be the hasty retreat when yeah. Hulk and and brother have to fight. Yeah, <laughs> it's like um, I'm gonna go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah I, I don't want to go for a round two. I already got beat up bad enough the first time. I yeah. don't need to repeat. <laughs> well, and when you know, in in Hulk and Thor in the in the gladiator ring, and then. Thor gets thrown yeah. around and Loki's like, yeah, that's what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nice, nice callback to uh, the Avengers. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, it, it's a, a nice uh, kind of almost a, a, a buddy adventure with, with Thor and Hulk. And then once Hulk mm-hmm. goes back into Banner, mm-hmm. Thor and Which Banner. Which is, is something you wouldn't, you didn't, or I didn't really think of when I, you know, think of Thor and Hulk. It's like, oh, okay, that does work. Yeah. It w- it wasn't a pairing that you would actually think would go together. No. Like, yeah. this works. Okay. Yeah. And it did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. I have no complaints. Yep. 
Uh, and then our last entry in the MCU is uh, Black Panther. The, yeah. you know, leading into Infinity War, not a huge tie-in, except for the nice little uh, appearance by a certain uh, broken white boy, as Shuri likes to put it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. At the end, but again, a solid movie. We've done a review of it, so someone wants to go listen, yeah. to, listen to that. You know, with no complaints with Black Panther. It's a... Oh, no. Really good, solid movie. I love Shuri. I think she's yes. one of my favorite Disney. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Uh, she's a Disney princess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I cannot wait for the meetup with her and Tony. Oh, my God, yes. yes. I know there's a clip that's been released of her and Banner, but I've not watched it. I refuse. Um, yeah, I'm not watching any clips. Yeah. Oh, I'm not either. Like, I, I saw that clip. I was like, no. Yeah, I was tempted. I was like, no. Scrolling, I, scrolling, I scrolling. Not yeah. clicking. I can make it, yeah. After tonight, I'm going to have to be very careful of af- where I go social media-wise because the the red carpet that's occurring right now is the first time that anyone will have seen the movie in completion. They've had other premieres in other countries around the world, but the movie has not been shown in completion. This will be the first time anyone has seen it. In completion. So after tonight, be careful of the interwebs. So people have seen, obviously, people involved in the movie should be able to keep their mouth shut. Hopefully. I'm, mm-hmm. They're not on the screen, but I'm shooting daggers and giving the stink eye to Ruffalo and Holland. Uh, <laughs> please keep your mouth shut until Thursday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. j- j- load them up with peanut butter sandwiches yeah. heavy on the peanut butter yeah yep yeah a little bit yeah but uh yeah so, so that's where we are now infinity war so which it's here it, it, here we go guys here we go mm-hmm. so, but it, it's been a ride it's been a ride yes. it's been it has. well and it's, it's hard to believe it's been a 10 year ride it doesn't yeah. seem like it's been that long yeah <laughs> Yeah, it is. And, that, and that, at the same time, it's like, wow, I, I guess it has been, you know, it mm-hmm. has been 10 years. And, you know, it's been, you think about just how many movies you've, we, we've, we've seen and how many times mm-hmm. we've rewatched them and analyzed them and gone over them and thinking, well, when we get to Infinity War and, you know, all of a sudden here we are. And, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah. it is. So. so I guess maybe to kind of wrap up here though um i've been i was to rewatch everything <laughs> at least all the movies yeah. I, I if i had more time and a bit more patience maybe i'd go back and watch all the tv stuff too but it's not necessary i don't think um except for maybe agents of shield i'm still hoping for some sort of tie-in we'll see um mm-hmm. Maybe after the movie comes out. Yeah, maybe. We'll see what happens on Friday. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, but uh, um, if, if I guess if anyone is, is listening, uh, hopefully you know, you're listening to this before you go see Infinity War, whether it's out or not by the time you listen to this. Um, but maybe for our listeners um, that... Um, maybe haven't had a chance to rewatch everything and don't want to or can't or whatever. Maybe, maybe two or three movies of the ones we just discussed that if you had time, you should absolutely positively watch before Infinity War. Oh boy. Um I'm pretty sure Civil War would be a yeah. good one. I agree yeah. with you on that one, Britt. Yeah, Civil War for sure. Maybe Guardians. Yeah. 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 I would definitely say the, the the first Guardians because that's where we uh-huh. get the Infinity Stone explanation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of important. <laughs> yeah. Ragnarok, or Thor Ragnarok, definitely seems like it. It's leading into oh, Infinity War. It, it, yeah. I, I would I would put money on the fact mm. that where. Thor Ragnarok ends, obviously not with like the the post credit scene with with the Grandmaster, but you know with, yeah. with Thor and Loki talking, you know, on the ship, 
And Thor's like, yeah, I think everything's going to be a okay right now. And then this big old ship shows up. The, mm -hmm. That's pretty much where Infinity War is going to start. Uh -huh. Yeah. Is Thanos, Thanos' is ship showing up to come and get that Tesseract that we know Loki lifted from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, what about Doctor Strange? I would... I put that on honorable mentions. Yeah. 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 If you have time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But watch it anyway, because it's awesome. Well, yeah. yes. <laughs> so, I would say the I other... I was thinking, like... No, go ahead. Um, no, mind. I'm backpedaling in my head. Yeah. <laughs> now, would any of the end scenes from... Guardians 2 play in to the infinity. Mm. I, I felt like those were yeah, just for no. Guardians. No. Okay. Other than the fact like that for, we see an older Groot, but yeah, I don't, I don't think so, because the setup with Adam Warlock won him to. Yeah. Okay, that, that, that seems like I it's going to be yeah. for Guardians 3. Yeah. Okay. But that's no, kind of what be I, wrong. I yeah. yeah, that's kind of what I was trying to remember from when we discussed the movie if the first go round, if that's what it, if it was set up for three and not infinity. So yeah, no, no. We'll find out. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe yeah. they find a way to put ability. Yeah. Um, I would say the only other one would be the first Avengers. Yeah, yeah. that. That's that where it all began. Yeah, with well, the first appearance of Thanos and and the first bringing bringing at least that that smaller group together. Obviously, at this point, the group has expanded quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> I think I think I read somewhere that there's like I'm assuming that they're counting like characters that have like names, named characters. Um, that there's like. Seventy something characters in in this movie. So and that includes like you know good guys, bad guys. You know like Thanos's Black Order, um, that sort of thing. It's it's huge. I mean, even if you just count, I think last time I counted, it was at like twenty or twenty plus. If you just count like the the characters that were you know the heroes. Um, you know that we recognize. So it's it's a huge movie. It's an absolutely huge movie as far as the amount of characters are included. But I'm again, I'm not concerned because it's a Russo's this civil war with a crap ton of characters in it and did a good job. So, um, but yeah, I would say I would say. The first Avengers, the first Guardians, and Civil War, and then Ragnarok. I think. So that's four. Which could be doable. If you're not going to see it, mm -hmm. like, Thursday or Friday, maybe. If you've got a little bit of time, you're not going to see it right away. I would I would say four movies is reasonable. And if you got some little extra time, maybe Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. So... Especially considering Doctor Strange and Thor Ragnarok overlap, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, I guess, you know, well, it's only a matter of time. We're just going to find out mm -hmm. no. in just a few days, yeah. most of us. Yep. 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 Well, I, I, I would, uh, I, I almost want to ask if anyone's got any predictions, but uh, I don't know if that's a road I really want to go down. No. Uh, no. I don't want I, to think well, about... I have, I have none, so... I don't want to think about who may kick the bucket in this movie. Yeah, like, so. yeah. I, I posted it in our chat, like, I have the Loot Crate app, and I was checking something, and that was, like, the first thing. It's like, it was a poll. Who do you think's gonna die? I'm like, None no. of them, except for no. Thanos. Thanos, yeah. Thanos and his cronies. Thanos and the Black Order. Yes. You want your answer, the answers? Thanos yes. and the Black Order. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's I like I have like in my head I have a list of like 
two characters that could die, and I would be like, eh, okay. Very, they're very minor. And then everyone else, I'm pretty much like, I just want to be like, uh, in the Emperor's no, New Groove, no touchy. No touchy. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Off okay, limits. No touchy. No touchy. No one allowed to die. No, no deaths. No, 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 no. Which I know is not going to happen, but. Good. <laughs> not going to happen, but first time I'm seeing this, is it some place where I can drink alcohol? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm probably going to need it. <laughs> now, some alcohol and a lot of Kleenex. Mm. That's going to be my mm. Thursday evening. <laughs> if I die, I will make sure Cha- Chauncey lets you guys know in the chat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this week. Yeah. Oh, and want to send in their their thoughts on on Infinity War or anything else that we've discussed. Send us feedback uh, at Five Ish Fangirls at Gmail dot com. You can also find all of our various social media stuff on our website, the Five Ish Fangirls dot com. You can also support us through Patreon or shopping through our Amazon store or our T shirt shop. And as always, we thank our supporters for everything that they do for us and and you all are great and are glad that you still keep coming back to us so we reconvene next week and hopefully all the feels haven't killed us yeah uh-huh. <laughs> yep and then uh, assuming that we're not dead um we will be discussing infinite episodes so <laughs> what I know! <laughs> it all comes down to this, kids. It does. <sighs> take a deep breath and let's go. Yeah. Take a, so many deep breaths before I see that movie. Yeah. Calm myself. Yeah. All right. Well, before we die of anticipatory <laughs> feels... Uh, can't die before it even happens. I already paid for my ticket. Uh, then uh, I guess we shall sign off for this week. This is Brittany and Bethlehem saying goodnight. This is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, Howard the Duck. Let's, <laughs> let's kill Howard the Duck. I'd be fine with that. been listening to the five-ish fangirls podcast and in all movies books games and other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders no copyright infringement is intended or implied